All right, welcome everybody to SFF Addicts special one year anniversary live stream. And I am so fucking excited. I'm just having a bit of tingles right now because it's one year celebrating this amazing podcast that I've created on a whim and has absolutely changed my life for the better. And thank you everyone for tuning in live. And thank you to my friends, Patricia A. Jackson and Peter Hartog for, for joining me. Patricia is the author of Forging a Nightmare. Peter's the author of the Guardian of Empire City series, including Bloodlines and Pieces of Eight, which he's pimping behind him. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. Yourself? Good, man. I got jitters. It's crazy. <laughs> How do you have jitters, man? I know. After, after, I can't believe it. So I've had 23 full panel episodes with authors, almost 25 author interviews, five like film club, TV club bonus episodes. So... I, this is one of the first times since the beginning that I've, that I've felt this way, but maybe it's because it's a live stream, but also at the same time, I'm just going to like, holy shit, learn? holy shit. It has been a journey. <laughs> I mean, now, honestly, Patty, you got like your teacher, like, what have you learned? I, <laughs> I asked the question that you're ignoring. The question was, what have you learned on your journey? I have learned how beneficial and special the science fiction and fantasy community is because Doing this podcast has been, you know, as someone who's wanted to write for a really long time and never really found the curse, the courage personally to actually, you know, forage out into the wilderness and, and figure out myself as a creative person or an author or what have you. This podcast has been the way in which my confidence has been boosted. I've made connections with incredible people and I've made friends, honestly, like you two. I don't know, like, I don't think anyone on the, that's listening has ever heard the story that I met Patricia through her agent, and then she ended up coming on to the podcast, reviewing Dune and uh, doing a urban, uh, urban fantasy sort of like noir themed episode, episode nine. And Peter, I just met on Twitter. We just had like a little bit of back and forth, nothing much, you know, and then I just kind of mustered it up within myself. Like I need to be with other writers. I need to write with them. I need to, you know, talk with them and, and get critiqued and critique other people's work to sort of feel that, feel that vibe, you know? And Peter was one of the first people that I reached out to just on Twitter DM. I was like, Hey man, do you want to start a writing critique group? And, uh, Dan Stout, who's coming on the podcast in uh, in like less than 10 minutes, he offered to help us, you know, sort of set up the critique group, get into a rhythm, uh, learn from his lessons and, and figure our way out. And ever since, I think, October, uh, Peter and I have been doing biweekly critique groups. And then Patty ended up joining on. And my writing has improved immensely because of you two. So thank you so much for that. Feelings mutual, man. I mean, the, the uh, you know, Twitter has been, uh, whether you love social media or hate social media or you're somewhere in between, which is me, um, <laughs> you know, eh, this is, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Um, you know, it has been, has been a tremendous uh, resource to discover writing friendships and real friendships, which we have, and mm -hmm. to be able to read and discover or just discover authors all over the world with all sorts of slants and ideas and brilliance just sheer brilliance of, of what i've myself uh have been able to find from the indie community from the yeah. published folks and from the traditionally published folks that mm -hmm. i may not normally have uh read in the past yeah um it's it's been great but for those who don't know, um, Adrian is putting together a phenomenal story. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a live re live reading of the prologue later during the live stream. So that's it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. But I, I I echo your sentiments, both of your sentiments. It's been a learning experience. It's been a great experience. And and uh, FanFi, you know, I had never heard of them until I came to Twitter and this and then discovered what kind of reach. And what kind of influence that you have, mm -hmm. uh, especially through this podcast and the subsequent episodes that I've watched. It's it's been tremendous. I've lived Thanks, on man. an island for a long time when it came to like my Star Wars stuff. I just didn't know about writers groups 
And someone said to me, how did you get so good by yourself? And I have no idea. Um, but being in writers groups is so helpful and has helped me blossom as a writer that I brought it into the classroom, um, which is very scary for mm -hmm. high school kids, 9 through 12, where they have to read their stories and then they have to <laughs> sit there for feedback. Now, I am a fierce mama bear, so no one can be mean or nasty. You know, that doesn't happen. And for the most part, <laughs> kids are really, really good about it. I had a principal walk in to talk to a kid about something. And as he was walking out, he's listening mm -hmm. to the kids give feedback. And not all of it's great. And he kind of turned and looked at me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, he's like, can I speak to your kids? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> And he complimented them because he didn't think some adults could handle like what was going on in the classroom. So, yeah, but some adults can. No, it's like really some no, adults cannot handle that. They can't. And it's like finding a good spouse. <laughs> so I guess it's like a writing <laughs> marriage between of us. You know, it's kind of a positive yeah. thing. I'm okay no, this is like a writing, like a writing threesome, you know, sorry to my wife, sorry to Peter's <laughs> wife, but that's what this is. <laughs> no, Tracy doesn't care. She's very happy to get rid of me on, a, on the odd Tuesday. Yeah. So, oh, know, she's, she's, she's like, probably oh, every two, every other Tuesday. She's like, Ooh, fuck. Yeah. I got my night to myself. <laughs> He's gone. I mean, look at the t-shirt I'm wearing. I mean, come on. She's like, I have to put up with that. But you hear horror stories about some yeah, no. people and how Very true. the meanness comes through and the ego mm. comes through. And mm -hmm. when you talk about the MFA programs that are just really just some nasty, egotistical people out there. Um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of scary. It's nice to find a good group and you hold on to it. Yep. Yeah, 100%. And that's why it's like, for me, it's so special. And I look forward to it. I just look forward to seeing you guys. And like, there are times when, you know, you have a rough week, you go through some shit, yes. you have your ups and downs, but we come together yeah. on a Tuesday and it's just like, oh, I missed you both. And then I come together on a Tuesday so and Adrian harasses me for giving <laughs> my feedback. Don't give me like that. I didn't harass you. I encouraged you to give me more. Oh, whatever. <laughs> If for those who don't know, I mean, uh, Patty alluded to it, uh, but she's a brilliant teacher, a brilliant high school teacher. Oh, and I, she and Patty hears me say this every other Tuesday. I wish and I mean it sincerely. I wish I had a teacher like you mm -hmm. because me too. you you support your students, you teach your students and you encourage your students. But you're not you know, it's it's not fake. It's you care. Mm -hmm. You you bring the care. I have the best bestseller, bestseller in my classroom. I know I do. I have the best selling writer. I know I do. You're and, you're. And, and I have lightsabers. <laughs> but you're bringing up lightsabers. You're bringing up the next generation in the best way possible because like right. the next generation of writers needs to have a thick skin, but also to pair that with empathy and understand like how to make it in this industry is you make the connections you make real connections, real friendships, that kind of thing. Don't be an asshole. And at the yeah. same time, be able yeah. to take some shit because publishing and writing will throw just like heaping, heaping mounds of shit at you all the time. Yeah, but what's industry. super cool is I've had people like Claire Edie of Tor come to visit with my kids. Mm -hmm. Sarah Megabo, KT Literaries come to visit with them. I've had Leslie Penelope, Chris Panettiere, Kristen Britton come in and visit. And the kids will ask these questions that kind of stops the adults for a moment. Mm -hmm. like, That's a really good question. Um, so it's not just kids, but it's the young generation of writers that are coming up that we are 100%. training. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, well, we're going to get Dan Stout and Jonathan Nevere in here. So Ooh. if anyone is on the live chat, if anyone's watching live, just throw your questions and we'll we'll slip them in uh, in a in a seamless way as much as possible. But I want to cheers to Patricia and Peter. I love you guys so much. And thank you for making me a better writer. And thank you for <laughs> helping me on my journey. So cheers, guys. You bet. You've been a great friend, Adrian. You have Fantastic. been awesome. Yep. All both of you, and thank you very much. Have fun, and uh, we'll see. No, you Peter, you no, no, no. You're staying oh, on. We're staying, staying on with uh, Dan and Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You know what? I have never actually <laughs> spoken with John. Uh, but John in person. John Navarre and I, I, we go back and forth on Twitter uh, all the time, and Dan is just an awesome guy. So I'm gonna all right, stay. Well, okay, cool. I'm staying. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're both staying. Let's get them in here. Dan Stout, Jonathan Navarre. Here, let's get them in this chat. How you doing, guys? Yeah, Dan, Woo! Great. What's up? <laughs> 
Good to see you guys. How are you? I'm excited. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So Jonathan was on episode 13 on the space opera episode. Dan was on for the urban fantasy and noir episode, detectives and noir. And he, like I mentioned earlier, he helped uh, Peter and I set up our writing critique and, and, you know, thank you again for that. It really, it really meant a lot to us. So good to have you guys here. It's so much fun talking about storytelling and stuff with writers and readers. I just love it. Mm. Yeah, me too. But how are you guys doing? Doing, doing, doing as best as I can in the hundred degree weather and hundred degree humidity of Southeast PA in summer. <laughs> and Jonathan showing off his tattoos. Look at that. Uh, man. It's for you, Adrian, right? You're the Oh, thank you. I covered mine up and you just went I, you just I went know, full I, on. I saw your tie and I thought, uh oh, I'm too casual. <laughs> I like it though. It's a nice mix. Nice. And Dan, how are you? I'm doing I'm doing really great. I didn't know there was gonna be a dress code. No, there's no dress code. I made it up for myself. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, big news for me is that I, I got married. So, Woo! Oh, married. congratulations! congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations and happy belated birthday as well, Dan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So all kind of all kind of came together. I had a really busy uh, last few months, but it's been great. That's amazing. Yeah. Damn. That's, th- those aren't your wife's tentacles behind you. I'm, I'm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's what happens to me. I just I, I thought I'd share. Oh, Knitting, <laughs> telling. Damn, dude. And also, Dan, thank you. You were the second author interview that I ever did after my friend Nicholas Eames. So you're the first author that I had interviewed and never met before. But man, I just clicked with you so fast. It was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a real pleasure, and and I'm happy that we've been able to continue our friendship. Are you trying to say he got his tentacles on you? You just couldn't. Get oh him? yeah. <laughs> oh. No, no. I mean, first of all, he wrote Titan Shade, which is one of my favorite, favorite urban fantasy novels. I gotta grab it here. It's a great. Uh, I've read the first book. I've got the next two on my Kindle. I've gotta. I've gotta get to them, and I will. I will. I read slowly. Oh yeah. I mean, just like I looked at that cover, and I was like, this dude's weird as fuck. <laughs> and and it just clicked, you know, like it was mm, just yeah. You just need kiss. A, that's that's someone who's sitting home, sitting at home, you know, just with tentacles on the wall. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jonathan, how's how's everything going with your with your new book with Stellar Instinct? Everything's going great. I'm basically about three scenes out from being completely finished, and then it will go off to beta. So I'm super excited. I'm, I'm shooting nice. for my, my deadline to get done before I start teaching again in three weeks. So yeah. it should be should be it should be possible. Nice. Uh, oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh Peter's Peter's on the cover for Jati's Wager, right? That's right. You are. Yeah, I'll be a race soon. I know, but I appreciate <laughs> time. It's just so cool to finally get to talk to you. We, I know we've been talking all the time on social media. It's great. Yeah, it, is. it is, Adrian. I, I do want to thank you. I have to say that, um, you know, in addition to just having an awesome year of episodes with amazing guests and authors, um, you've done such a good job of being really careful to, or actually just gracious enough to include indie authors in in the groups of guests, and it's made such a difference for so many of us. Myself, I mean, I had the honor of being on a podcast with you with Adrian Tchaikovsky and Jenny Dewis and it was like mm-hmm. you know I mean, <laughs> it was just like uh wow and really I just want to say thanks for that it's, it's really awesome um, that, that you do that no I mean I really appreciate that that for me has been something that is so uh integral to to my just sense of what this podcast is about because from the very beginning I started out with Fanfy Addict and and these are like indie bloggers you know so it was really important for me to also extend that to the indie and self-pub community because through my interactions on Twitter I realized these people are so talented there's just so much passion there and there's so much um, love for science fiction fantasy but also the actual business side of publishing and I just saw this this grit that I haven't seen in many other industries, maybe tattooing. There's a lot of grit in tattooing that I witnessed. But in indie and self-publishing, there's this immense amount of grit for people who decide to take on the task of writing a book and then finding a cover artist and a cover designer and then marketing that thing, going to print on demand uh, websites, getting that converted into digital form. Like it's fucking bonkers, the amount of work that goes into this stuff. But I love 
seeing people who do hard work and are passionate about it. And so I wanted to be able to extend my platform, you know, and I'm just like blown away by the people I've been able to have on this platform. But at the same time, it's like, I want to show love across the board because I respect people on the traditional side and I respect people on the self pub side. And it's really important that these two come together and understand how intertwined they are in this whole science fiction and fantasy conglomerate, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So thank you, Jonathan. I appreciate yeah. that. Grit is I mean, exhausting, but. <laughs> <laughs> As yeah, but that's, <laughs> yeah, but but grit is like, it's that kind of thing that you, you learn to appreciate through attrition, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, I became a better person because of the, the shit that I went through, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I met Peter because of it. And, you know, I met you and and I met so many amazing people just by extending a, a, a hand and saying, hey, do you want to come on the show? And uh, it's been really special for me. So, yeah. And uh, Dan, how's your like game writing, all that kind of stuff going? How's that been? Uh, it's it's really fun. And I, I just I love learning new ways of storytelling mm. and the different the different voices that you can kind of adapt when you're working in games um and mm. the the way that you can tell a story through something other than text and prose yeah. you can tell it through costume design it's it's it feels like i'm putting on a little theat theatrical production every time i work in narrative <laughs> design in the game because i'm taking everything into account from the score yeah. and, uh, character design and everything else so um dude that's my awesome do it that's really cool. Like how how involved are you? Like what kind of game is it? Is it more like the indie side or like a smaller game or what's the what's the deal? I've mostly been doing um, stuff on the indie side um, as I'm kind of learning and you know like getting my dues in and really learning yeah. this new format. Uh, it's certainly tied to prose, but it's a little bit like switching from um, running sprints to a marathon. You know, it's still running, yeah. but it's a totally different skill set. Um, yeah, but I just I love that collaboration and I love that sense of togetherness that you really get when you're working with a team when it fires. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we did a we did an episode back in um, May about video games and SFF. And one of the people that was on was Austin Grossman, who's done games like Dishonored, um, Deus Ex and things like that. And it was really cool to get his insight into like how the game world works because it's like this concept of what a writer is within gaming is just so frazzled because nobody has like a clear set idea like this is your role and these are your tasks and that kind of thing and it's just this like crazy jumble yeah well and it's like you said about uh indie and trad you know like we're we're in different worlds and we're on different tracks but we're all running parallel and we're mm -hmm. all storytellers mm -hmm. and we all love exactly these conventions and this activity that we're involved in oh dude that's amazing well uh i'm really excited to to check it out when it comes out and it's just like man i look at titan shade and its sequels and i'm just like i want you to write another book but i have to be patient so <laughs> <laughs> this is like i just want more but then again it's like i've learned through doing this podcast and through being a reader it's like you have to be a bit gracious uh when it comes to creators because you can't just force them to you know, create content at a pace that it, satisfies you it's because it's like, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's like yeah. anyone who's given like George R. R. Martin or Patrick Rothfuss any shit, it's like, <laughs> just let it be, man. They'll release it when they release it. You could reread the books or rewatch the show, whatever the fuck. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, uh, we're going to get ready for the next round of guests, but it's been amazing seeing you all again. Uh, Jonathan, when is uh, Stellar Instinct out? And then if you can let know, people know where they can find you on social media. Sure, yeah. So uh, Stellar Instinct releases December 1st, uh, which is very exciting. And um, you can find me on Twitter at jnavare. Uh, and also my website is jonathannevare.com. Uh, and all the audio has just dropped for Wind Tide as well. So that's now Whew. out, which is exciting. Congrats, man. And uh, where can people find you on social media? On me? Yeah. Uh, Jay Navare is on Twitter and uh, at Jay Navare at Instagram as well. Awesome. And Jonathan, we're going to we're gonna set up an interview. So we'll do cool. uh, another chat for the release of Stellar Instinct. And Dan, what about you? What you got coming up? Uh, where can people find you on social media? Uh, people can find me at danstout.com. And you can also sign up for the Campfire newsletter there, where I just talk about 
storytelling and swap stories with other readers and just have a great time. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best way to keep track of what I'm up to. And I, I have a few projects going right now, but nothing I can talk about or give a release date. But I do totally have some fair, really cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. That's the same for Patty and Peter. Uh, you know, if you guys can let people know where they can find you on social media as well. Um, you can find me at my website by birthright.com. Um, my, my urban fantasy forging a nightmare came out in November. Um, I am sitting on a manuscript right now and I'm hoping for the best currently working on an epic fantasy, which is where I live and where I'm happy and mm -hmm. might potentially have a chance to go back into where my old roots were star Wars. Mm -hmm. So we got our Ooh. fingers and toes crossed for that. Hell yeah. All right. And Peter, what about you, bud? Um, I, I'm working on book three of the Guardian of Empire City series, which probably will never get finished, but I'm working on it with the help of the Shut up. Don't, no, 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 no. None of that. Yeah, really. Don't <laughs> and uh, also, also uh, uh, I'm, I'm fangirling because I've read all three of their books, and it's just so awesome to see all three of you here. And anyway, it's just phenomenal. Um, my website is peterhartog.com and I can be found on Twitter at, at Althazir, A-L-T-H-A-Z-Y-R. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks it was so amazing much. to see you. Thank you, Patty. Nice to see you, Peter. Yeah. Great and I'll see you all soon. Okay. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's get this next round of guests in here. We got a Dunecast reunion with none other than Matt Kressel. How are you, buddy? Good. How you been? Good. And Cody Cisco. How are you, sir? Hi, Adrian. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, my pleasure, man. And uh, yeah, how you guys been? Good. I uh, I just finished uh, Stranger Things last night uh, oh, and ooh. was blown away. Nice. What did you What did you like about it? Oh, I mean, so first of all, the challenge of br bringing in all those threads from like five different simultaneous stories and having mm -hmm. them like all add up and contribute to the story, like as a storyteller, that blew me away. But I mean, visually and, um, you know, all the retro throwbacks, it was great. That's awesome. I mean, I haven't gotten around to season four yet. I just finished up The Boys last night with my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stranger Things, I, like, I don't know if I want to have myself in on something. Oh, there's Liam's hand. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get into something so so gritty and uh, and uh, disgusting just yet. But It is horrific, yes. It's horrific, but it... It has moments of lightness and heart, so yeah, it's coming through the it's, phone. It's fun. I mean, I, I don't know. It reminds me of like the best '80s horror films, you know. Yeah. Oh man, and Matt, how have you been? I've been uh, pretty good. Um, just taking a little trip uh, with my wife right now. We're in upstate New York, so uh, in the mountains and doing nice. some hiking, trying some breweries, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. Been pretty good, yeah. Man, well, I appreciate you taking the time. It looks amazing behind you, just like a nice windswept forest. I was hoping to sit outside, but then the, the rain, uh, there's a little thunderstorm coming in. So I was like, probably should sit inside. But uh, yeah, it's it's really nice. Yeah. We saw, we saw a, a, a bear when we first got here in the backyard. That was nice. <laughs> That brings me back to home in British Columbia. Just like seeing some dangerous wild animals every once in a while. I was like, that's pretty loud to be a deer. And then I say, oh, no, that's not a deer. Uh, let's go inside. <laughs> cool. And uh, Liam, how are you doing? Can you hear us? No, nope. he's got a pensive oh, no. face. It's all good. <laughs> um, what have you guys been working on? Like, uh, What's new with you and, uh, and your writing? Uh, well, I've, I'm finishing up uh, my far future science fiction novel that I am probably, oh, I don't know, four or five chapters from the end. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty close, like closing in. Um, I feel the ending. Uh, my tendency when I get towards the ends of things is to want to rush to the finish line. But I'm like, no, I, I got to force myself to be patient and, you know, take the time that I need mm -hmm. to, to tell the right story and, you know, not, you know, really trying hard to, to, to surprise the reader. Yeah. Um, I don't want the readers to be like, oh, I saw that coming. I want the readers to be like, oh, <laughs> that was, I did not expect that. That was cool. So really yeah. work on that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's coming along. Cool, man. Well, I'm very excited. Are you able to do some like nice relaxation writing while you're up there in upstate New York? 
Um, I didn't actually get to do too much writing here um, just because we've been kind of busy. Um, but, you know, I actually started a, a sub stack recently. Um, mm -hmm. I can do a little blurb. It's, it's, uh, out, it's called outerdeep.substack.com. And uh, one of the recent topics I wrote about is like, I feel sometimes that like writing takes place away from the page, right? So it's mm. sometimes, right? So it's like, if you're constantly thinking about stuff, working on stuff in your head, like ideas are always coming to me. So I have like, I use my little note app on my phone and if I have- Yeah, yeah, me too. Great. And I just like, I'll either dictate it and it completely- you know, mess up the, the proper nouns that I have, the made up names I have for stuff. It's a, it's a garbled idea, but it's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm like oh, yeah, that thing is that. And, and then, uh, yeah. And then I'll go back later and, and try to insert that into the work in progress. So it's like, mm -hmm. even though I'm not like at the keyboard every morning, which is my usual routine, I'm still like, ideas are still going on. Oh, that's awesome. And Cody, what about you? What you got going on? Um, I'm in editing mode for the third book in the resonant earth series and nice. super excited about that i'm also kind of at the same time going to be re releasing a new edition of the first book because um yeah there's just reasons <laughs> but um yeah so editing mode for that and then um the made in la volume four uh anthology came out in may cool. so i'm um hooking up all the contributing writers with um events where they can go and read their work so awesome. that's fun to be able to do that in person again. We'd been on hiatus for a while and now we're back. Yeah. And I'm really curious because I know you do a lot of, uh, you know, like editing and, and that kind of stuff as well as doing your own writing. But like when you're putting together an anthology like this, what, I mean, from your perspective, how is that compared to writing? And then like, what is that process like sort of in a nutshell? I mean, it's really about putting puzzle pieces together um, when you don't know what it's supposed to look like in advance. Right. So we're we're um, evaluating submissions, um, choosing those that stand on their own and that fit together as a total uh, composition as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that part of it's a lot of fun. I mean, writing a book is similar in that you're piecing together different characters and plot lines um, and setting and wrapping them all up in something that makes sense. Um, right with the added challenge of actually, you know, <laughs> producing the words. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I find, you know, uh, the editing process is one, or maybe call it a skill. It's one that's grown out of the writing process. Very cool. So when it comes to this, this uh, Made in LA, um, have you been involved since the beginning or? Yeah, it's my, it's my baby. Um, there's mm -hmm. a few co-editors um, who've been in it since the beginning and we sort of came up with the idea together and now, continue to um, evolve it. You know, we're lo always looking for more people on the team to read submissions, to help us, you know, get organized. And um, yeah. it's been one of those things that's just like, compared to everything else, it seems almost effortless. Mm. Um, yeah. But from your perspective, like why did you want to highlight LA? Um, you know, everyone has an idea about what it is. And um, with this anthology series, we get to look at some of the overlooked angles on it. And, um, you know, there's a strong speculative bent for a lot of writers in LA. So we get to showcase, um, you know, uh, science fiction, horror, crime, um, all of those kind of darker uh, kinds of stories, which I mm -hmm. love um, a lot. And so um, it's always fun to see those, you know, in a sunbaked setting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I definitely want to check that out. Cause it's like having been to LA multiple times growing up and, and getting a feel for it. It's like that. I feel like reading the writing from writers in a specific place about a specific place gives you such a cool sense of what that place is actually like. Absolutely. Um, and Liam, can you hear us? You're on mute. Or I can't hear you. Hey, Liam. <laughs> Just fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now you're still on mute man no it's okay if everyone can lip read we can we can have a chat with you <laughs> uh technical issues abound this is a live stream so i was expecting it <laughs> but it's all good
Matt, what and, you said about um, writing notes, I think that, you know, it's interesting. They're kind of like breadcrumbs back to your trains of thought, which could mm -hmm. arise like anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I often come up with ideas while I'm on the treadmill at the gym and then I'm like trying to dictate it while I'm like moving. <laughs> and then it's like, like this scene is really breathy. Like, like, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> You know, I drop my phone and it's a disaster. But yeah, it, it comes at any time. You got to be ready for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's, this is like a modern extension of, you know, I tried it for a little bit to have like a notepad next to my bed, mm -hmm. wake up in the middle of the night, have a really cool thought, that kind of thing. But then at a certain point, it's just like, no, then I have to turn on my lamp and it just becomes a hassle. And then I realized like, if I have my phone with me, it doesn't matter where I am. Even if I'm in the shower, my phone is waterproof. So it's just like, just grab that and like open the notes app. Sometimes like some water beads can like make my, make my, the keyboard, like type something the wrong way, right. but it's like, fuck oh, it. Man. The general idea is all it's about. And if you can go back to that and sort of, I don't know, like rekindle whatever thought process you had in that particular moment, I think it's mm -hmm. amazing benefit. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I think that like when, when you're in the writing mode, your brain's in a certain frame. And then if you think about your work when you're not in that frame, it, it, it can actually pro provide a different perspective on it. And then you mm -hmm. can get new ideas to apply to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And Tiffany's with us. How are you? Hi. Tiffany Trent. Hi. I just came from puppy class. Sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> hey, that puppy class. What you me to say. <laughs> no, puppy class is like the coolest way that you could have said, I'm late. I had to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Puppy class. Sorry. <laughs> How are you doing, Tiffany? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah, doing really well. Just happy to see you all again. It's been a long time, but uh, yeah. it's great to see your faces. Yeah. And, um, Really thankful that you all came on to to do the Dune cast with me back in um, yeah. November last year, and and I'm really curious. Like, have any of you watched the movie again since we last talked about it? I have not. I I want to badly because I I keep I I keep like hearing stuff about the sequel, and mm -hmm. I want to just mm -hmm. go back and, and revisit it, and yeah. No, I haven't yet. No, I feel the same way, Matt. It's like since we talked about it, I haven't haven't watched it again. Even though I said like all of these points that everybody brought up is so cool and all these tiny little details. And it's like I want to go back. And then I just never got around to it. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking about it. I'm like, why the fuck didn't I do that? But at the same time, before Dune Part Two comes out, I am one hundred percent gonna just like hyper analyze that movie and get myself ready for what's to come. Yeah, I recently watched the uh, the sci-fi Dune, the one that from like 2000, I think it came out. Yeah, because you've been doing like a thing with Geek's Guide from um, to the Galaxy about like rewatching some of the older movies, right? Rewatching a lot of 80s films, science fiction films. So we did like a Dune thing. We read the book, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't hate the sci-fi one. The other panelists were not so fond of it. I yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I just love the story so much that that part came through, you know, yeah. and I was able to ignore the bad sets and the bad acting. <laughs> the costumes. The costumes, yeah. I mean, there are literally like some like sets that are just like, they just like, let's just paint a curtain and put it behind a wall and that'll yeah. it'll look like a city. It's, it's Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> You just have to use your imagination, Matt. Come yeah. on. It's like the early 2000s version of, um, what is it, like... Uh, uh disney they use that that like video backdrop thing for all of the star wars shows i can't remember what it's yeah. called um yeah. but it's like the early 2000s version of that like we'll just paint some shit nobody will notice it'll be okay yeah it, it almost felt like a stage play in that sense but yeah hmm. <laughs> all right well um tiffany do you want to just let us know what you've been working on since we last saw you and then unfortunately Liam's had some technical issues but you're here i see your face it's good to see you again my friend I can hear me. Now oh, we yeah. can hear you. Now we can hear you. know what? If the window next to me was higher than two stories, I would jump out of it. Oh, my Don't. God almighty. That's a ridiculous. I Don't swear to like God. That, buddy. I, I, well, actually, no. All right, then, fine. I'll take it back. I'll throw the laptop out of it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can I do yeah, that yeah. first, please? Yeah. No, no self-sacrifice. It's just no like the laptop can go. No. <laughs> If you're going to defenestrate, uh, defenestrate the laptop first. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so June. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, we gotta we gotta we gotta wrap up because I got the next round of guests oh, coming in, yeah. but yeah, we heard yeah. your voice, so I'm very, very happy about that, Liam. Uh Tiffany, just to let right. us know what you're working on and uh where people can find you on social media. Um, Tiffany Trent on Twitter is a great place to find me. I'm on Instagram at TL Trent Books. Um also and um I'm working on my first adult epic fantasy and I should Whew. be publishing that in the next couple of months. So yeah. amazing. Probably. Congratulations. So look out for it. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations on that. And Thank uh you. Liam, we'll get your voice back in here. What you working on, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to take a deep deep drink the big yeah. swallow okay <laughs> it, it the me first novel that was published is called road to juno buy it it's apparently good a uh, cleverer people than me have called it watchmen mixed with akira which is nice Ooh. um very lovely isn't it uh, and I'm currently working on a television pilot, a, a short story cool. to add to an anthology, and a second novel that isn't related to the first. Awesome, man. And where can people find you on social media? Um, uh, on Twitter, I'm at Specificity A, because I like silly words. Uh, and on Vero, I'm uh, Liam.Quain, uh, which if you don't have Vero, get Vero. It's the best. <laughs> Um, and just just type in Liam Quayne if you know how to spell it, and you'll you'll find me somewhere. Yeah, just not and, in the uh, stream. And Liam and I will be talking about the Sandman soon for a TV club review. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And uh, Cody, what about you? Where can people find you on social media? Um, Twitter, Cody Cisco, uh, and uh, for my website, same thing. dot com. Cool. And uh, Made in LA Volume Four is out now. Yes. Yes, it is. I... <laughs> Let's see this bad boy. <laughs> Have it right here. Oh, focus, focus. Yeah. Ooh, that's beautiful. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you. And uh, Matt, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Matt Kressel, and my website, matthewkressel.net. And uh, like I said before, I just started a Substack, outerdeep.substack.com. And uh, yeah, you can see my long and short fiction on my website. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I know it was quick, but it was really good to see you again. So thank you so much. And you maybe I'll see you soon to talk some Sandman. Thanks. Right. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's get this next round of guests in here. We got <gasps> Crystal Matar and Dan Fitzgerald and Luke Tarzian and Luke. Angela Board. How Angela. are you all? Hi. Crystal, great. Good, good. How are you? I'm good. How's everyone doing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here. So how bad could it be? <laughs> Angela, what's going on that you just dropping? Okay. Um, I'm a little. Um, I've got 67 more pages of a 1,279-page um, manuscript to edit. So Ooh. I'm almost done, but I'm a little shell shocked. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm a, I'm I'm alive. That's what I You're here. Say. I'm here. You're here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well thank you for that. I appreciate you taking a little <laughs> step away from that that, that war that you're going through. Yeah, and I, I can tell you from behind the scenes she's been working like a fiend. Oh yeah. my god. It's like well I had an August 1st deadline and I kind of I half made it. Mm -hmm. And so this is like the second part of that. So <laughs> It You're close. The, I'm, I'm, I'm close. I almost hit it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> you got to tell us how many words it is, Angela. Right now? Like, right now it's 300,000. It, no, oh, no, more than that. It's 400,000. Yeah. No, not quite yet. Not quite. It's like in the, it's 370,000 right now. Jesus Christ. Moment. You're a fucking <laughs> animal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Meanwhile, my next book clocks in at a, at a, at a hefty 81,000. <laughs> that's a nice, 81, that's a nice yeah, tight count, like, Dan. Yeah. Right. And I've got this sick cover designer working on. I can't wait. <laughs> nice. Hi, Crystal. Hi. Of course, just at 205, my internet just died. Just to prove how shitty it my is. My booty so baby I... strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you, honey. I turned off Thank my you. tethering. I'm good to go. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. I really appreciate it. Um, Dan, how are you doing? You. And, uh, 
<laughs> how are you doing and how's this new book coming along? Uh, well, I've got three books written. One of them is about to go to my editor at the end of the month. That's called mm -hmm. The Delve. And uh, Luke's doing the cover, so Woo. that's very exciting. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and the other two still have to be edited, Wings So Soft and Cody's Song. They're all a smutty romantic fantasy um, with just all kinds of crazy. The first one is like a smutty dungeon fantasy. So it's like nice. hardcore dunge dungeon uh, action, but also like hardcore dungeon action, if you feel me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I you could love just stop that. Hardcore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Dan, how are you yeah. feeling about you're going to be self publishing all three of these, right? How Correct. are you feeling about that? I'm excited. You know, I've got a lot of people, good people in my corner uh, to help me learn the ropes. And I'm looking forward to the new, a new adventure. Oh, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And you got Luke, you got Luke taking care of you visually. Like, mm -hmm. Luke, you got to make that cover as sexy as possible. <laughs> I know I'm you love in the it. top knot, by the way, Luke. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke, how are you doing? When is your, your new book is already out, right? uh no so i have i have a novelette or novella i can't decide the length yet coming out december 20th um i had to put a pause on the uh vultures sequel why is that uh i needed to take a break it was getting really dark <laughs> that's totally fair that's totally fair but with this with this uh novel novella it's about like the devil right that's the one that's yeah out so yeah, so it's this sort of weird, trippy fever dream, and the basic premise is um, somebody stole Lucifer's tea kettle, so he has to go find it. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I don't know why, but it popped into my head. Anyone who's played The Witcher 3, one of the first quests that you can uh, get is from this old woman who asks you to find her frying pan. So yeah, I don't know exactly. why. <laughs> I just thought of that. It's like, let's go find a tea kettle. Lucifer's tea kettle of all things. <laughs> Cool, man. And Crystal, how's your war of attrition going with uh, Brick and Bone? <laughs> it's, I'm winning. I'm gaining ground. One day <laughs> I will be finished this book, hopefully um, this week. Um, it's, it, I, I struggled with it. It got really dark. Um, so Luke, I, I can relate. And I tried yeah. <laughs> to like steer it away and I wasted a lot of time steering it away from the darkness. Um, Whereas I should have just done what Luke did and take a break and I probably would have been further by now. But it's back on track. It's dark as fuck. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. It's going to be awesome. Because <laughs> your first book was pretty so... dark in and of itself. So I'm like, oh shit, what does Crystal have going on in her yeah. twisted mind? <laughs> I know. I know. And the first book was like, it's not that dark, is it? And then the second book is like, yeah, okay, I see it. <laughs> but um, I can still promise that the, the core of hope is still there is just tested even more than this time but that that's just like you in a nutshell it's like the the outer yes. facade of hope and deep deep within there is much darkness <laughs> oh, yeah yeah that that tracks <laughs> and angela are you going to be helping crystal out in terms of like editing and stuff or yeah well i read i read the first version so yeah, I think so. She'll well, that's the second version. This is the, well, I, and then this is what she's working on is the, I don't know, like how many versions can you, <laughs> it's way, which How many versions this, and how many she words, lets Crystal? me read it, I will read it. I will, yeah. love, I, yes, I am planning on it. <laughs> Angela, Angela read the version that I was trying to pull out of the, <laughs> the darkness um and so it it's it, it ended up super horny so um, <laughs> but I, what a shock <laughs> crystal I horny um who would have thunk less dark and horny yeah so she but i'm i'm moving it back now meeting some middle ground between um the version that i had that was depressing the fuck out of me and then the version that angela read so now it's both i guess amazing i just wanted awesome. to enter into the record that crystal is one of the people one of the main smut influencers in my own writing so i wanted to say publicly thank you for helping me find my smutty side crystal you got a trademark that turned welcome <laughs> 
I like that. We're so glad to Oh, I, somebody on Twitter told me that they wrote it. They wrote a masturbation scene thanks to my influence. So I'm pretty excited about that too. <laughs> hey, you guys know how, we how put that in our Twitter bios? Yes, yeah, but influencer. You know how it's Playboy. Too, yeah. You know how Playboy used to be like a really big place for publishing short stories. I yeah. think there needs to be like a new version of that. Like I don't know, like Pornhub, Pornhub Literary, or something like that. <laughs> Just read it for the stories. <laughs> Just for the stories, man. Just for the stories. I'm my hand, my hands on the keyboard. My hands on the keyboard. <laughs> I mean, actually, the the tagline for for the Dell was was going to be Pornhub X D and D. You know, like. <laughs> oh, yo! What about like uh, like some live D and D sessions, but everyone's nude and things get saucy. <laughs> My mind is going off to Andrew? really fucked up place. Of course, Crystal. I'm gonna take off this shirt and tie. Why are you wearing a tie? Why are you wearing a tie? Why That's for bondage. Tie? It's for bondage, of course, Dan. <laughs> okay, good answer. Also, in the comments, Paul English Wolf said the closest thing I'll get to God is this panel. Every single person is fantastic. So thank you, Paul. Love you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, I knew I knew I was like bringing the four of you together with me, and things would get really erotic real quick. So I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm surprised like, you didn't put us later in the show. No, I wanted it to get I saucy as soon as possible. This is like this is like <laughs> this is like the prologue to climax. <laughs> I mean, yes, we're out here making fantasy anal again, right? Climax, that's rude. No, you're coming back to the climax. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Crystal. You should have kept this for the end so we could have like an edging effect. But anyway. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. <laughs> Crystal just made it personal. You just made it personal. Come on. Dan said and that reminded very me of something I just wrote for this novella. <laughs> yeah. I'd... Typically, mm -hmm. my shit's like super serious, super I... dark, but for this one, I just went off the walls with it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh my god oh i am very very happy to see you all but uh we need to let let connor and tori and justin uh oh, get fuck. in here in a, in a couple minutes but uh dan can you let everyone know when your next book is coming out and where they can find you on social media uh, the delve is coming out in january the next two will be july and maybe the following january and i'm dan fitz writes on twitter instagram tiktok and dot com and if you ever want a, you know, a smutty influencer, just check him out. He'll be your next smutty influencer if you want to write a masturbation <laughs> scene. <laughs> and uh, Angela, what about you? Where can people find you and when's your next book coming out or what you're working on? Um, you can find me at Angela Board on Twitter. Um, my website, which will hopefully be updated soon, is AngelaBoard.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. I really do try to keep it like every month but sometimes like now it's a little bit later because i've been working on the book um through dreams so dark is what i'm working on now and cross your fingers because i'm hoping to bring it out the end of october Ooh. but uh, yeah so it's a cold war portal fantasy epic Ooh, amazing. very large book thing so <laughs> also have to say sean Connolly uh from fan addict he just wrote in the comments omg what the fuck did i walk into <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love hanging out with you guys. Uh, Luke, where can people find you on social media? And um, when's your next book coming out? Yeah, um, so my next book's coming out December 20th. It's a novella called a, uh, a Cup of Tea at the Mouth of Hell or An Account of Catastrophe by Stoudemire McCloud, Demon. Um, you can find me at social media. I'm on Twitter, Luke underscore Tarzian, and uh, website is LukeTarzian.com. Amazing. Thank you, my friend. And Crystal, my dear wrap it up can i just say first luke you have the most amazing titles <laughs> like, <laughs> this one has just it's like every word is perfectly assembled into like yes i want that he's like the modern day christopher marlowe with dropping some fausto yeah. songs <laughs> yeah okay um where can you find me who knows um we can find you mostly um on Pornhub, of course. <laughs> not, not yet. They don't have literature there. Ooh, it's coming. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, yeah. <laughs> at Twitter, Chris, at Chris Matar. And then I have a website that I also never update, chrisomatar.com. 
Um, and I'm not yet on Pornhub because they don't post any literature yet. <laughs> That's soon. your new Twitter bio. Soon, yeah. I'll soon be on Pornhub. <laughs> Brick and bone coming to Pornhub near you. <laughs> Okay, I love you guys so much. I'm going to get Dory, Justin, and Connor in here. It was really good to see you all. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? All All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye. (laughs) All right, let's get Tori and Justin joining us from Kentucky. And Connor and Kaplan, man in San Francisco, moving up in the world, dude. How are you guys? (laughs) I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well. And Tori, Justin, how are you doing? We're good. 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 <laughs> Justin, you shaved your head, man. That looks awesome. I did. I just shaved it, like actually. Like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Really? And oh, man. I, yeah, I started like uh, 45 minutes ago, and my trimmers died halfway through, so I just had like a mullet left. <laughs> you should have come on with oh, that man. and then shaved the rest afterwards. No. That's no, not. It's not. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, but it looks worse if you started with this and you just have like the little thing on the side. You look like George Costanza. Oh, god, with a beard, oh. of course. Is that good? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. Adrian. <laughs> I don't think that's I'm a saying, compliment. <laughs> I'm saying if you shave the side of your or oh, if you shave okay. up top, okay. yeah. I'm not saying in general you look like okay. George Costanza. Okay. I'm saying like George Costanza bald if you shaved it up top first. I still don't like it, but it's less I'm offensive s- now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. It's like we're like one minute in and I've already offended you. <laughs> yeah. Connor, how's it going in San Francisco, buddy? Doing good. I've commandeered Sarah's house successfully. Um, and um, she's um, off on a, a trip. So I'm just, I've, we've been hanging out here. Um, are you looking I'm, after her pugs? Uh, no, her pugs are with her mom. Uh, unfortunately, mm. she wouldn't let me take care of. You're not responsible. <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> she was like, "Well, she's like, I know what I, she knows. Her mom knows how to take care of pugs, but she like she like she doesn't. She hasn't known me long enough to take to let me take care of the pugs or something like that." That's totally fair. But like, how did you end up in San Francisco in the first place? Because I just opened Instagram one day and it's just like Connor with like a little gangster photo in San Fran. I'm like, what are you doing there, man? <laughs> Um, my fiance got an internship at the Lucasfilm archive. Um, Ooh. and, uh, she, she, uh, she hopped on zoom for an interview and they were like, do you know how to get to, are you going to be able to get to California? And, um, she was like, yeah, for sure. Definitely. And then, and then I was like, okay, so how do we get to California? And I was like, well, who do I know in California? And I wound up like texting Sarah at some point being like, yeah. Hey, I've been on your podcast, right? <laughs> can live with you like for a couple months <laughs> that's a hefty ask it's like this podcast guest just comes and fucking crashes my house <laughs> i didn't think she was gonna say yes but dude that's the that's amazing it's like the things that that happen just because it's like oh you write a book and then you know we're writing for fan or you know i start a podcast and it's like Sarah, first of all, Sarah Carruthers from Fiction Fans, shout out to her because she's fucking amazing. Lily Ellison as well. But just the fact that it's like you can make a friendship just based on like a podcast over the internet or some virtual connection. And then it's like, okay, Connor's in San Francisco and he's like house sitting, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. That's really cool. Damn, that's amazing. Oh, and are you finding it like good for for you to be able to be in San Francisco and be able to just like relax and write and check out the town and that kind of stuff? Um, it's really new and it did require a lot of adjusting at first because it, it feels like another planet, like because I was in Massachusetts for like before this and now I'm just like, there are so many hills. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Um, I, Work I those like, legs, man. It's like get, get those thighs working out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, if I knew there were going to be this many hills, I would have done a few more leg workouts before I got here. You got the time, man. You got the time. Yeah. I think just walking in San yeah. Francisco is like the best way to oh god attune yourself it's... to its weird geography. I didn't know what the geography was going to be like when I first got here. So the first time I went to San Francisco, it's like, we can walk to this place that's seven miles away, right? And then we did. <laughs> and um, I would not have, I would not have made that choice if I knew what I was in for. Uh, Connor, Paul English Wolf is asking you, what's best about YouTube? Talking about your books online or displaying those fine biceps? (laughs) (laughs) 
Nice, Paul. Very nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, what's your answer? What's best about YouTube? Yeah, we... Oh, shit. I didn't know I was actually expected to answer. <laughs> it was a question. I can take a sip to buy myself some Oh, time. just thinking about my fine biceps and forget about everything else. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't talk about the biceps. <laughs> and then Dan Fitzgerald said Paul is a one-man peanut gallery. So answer oh, the question, Connor. <laughs> no, I like to talk about the books. <laughs> the books, man. The biceps, the biceps is just a just bonus. Fun... Yeah, it's just the fun side effect of all the curls. Yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah. the cherry on top of the Connor cake, you know? Sure. <laughs> mm. And uh, oh, Tori, how's, how's writing going? How's Zodiac Rising coming along? That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my laptop right now. My laptop went kaput, and Justin works on his all the time. So yeah, I'm at a standstill pretty much pretty that's what much pens it. are for pens baby gotta get a pen and a paper but i don't have my file and i can't make my edits and it's all technology technological and i'm making I can see how editing will be rough on pen and paper if you don't yeah editing editing for sure yeah editing for sure would be that's, and that's where i'm at mess. is pretty much revisions so mm-hmm you can like go to like a local print shop and just get them to be like, put this in a binder. Like I see authors do, and I'm just like, how many times do you print that shit? Wait, I, and it's just like, ah. I did. Have that. you done that, Connor? Yeah. How many I, pages was like, it? There's a site called uh, Lulu that you can use to like. I I took the the book I'm currently working on, uh, and I needed to. I didn't have access to a printer, so I basically like got it on. Um, I got it like bound like as a book and then just edited it from there. It's actually in the other room. It's huge. They they did it like an eight by 10. And so it's like a giant textbook the size of my chest. Crazy, dude. How much did that cost you? It was like 20 bucks. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. I was thinking it would be a lot more. But then again, it is just like, probably what costs more, more is like getting a binder than, than printing out the pages. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that'd definitely be pricier. Uh, with this, I just like found a stock photo uh, and they printed it sideways, which kind of shows you the amount of work that I'm putting into this. It's professionalism as always, Connor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, and Justin, how you been, buddy? How's everything going with Escapist Tours? Uh, it's going really well. Um, we were booked up now until like November um, and filling up really quickly through the end of the year and, and into next year already. So awesome, oh, man. man. It's been really good. It's just really busy. A lot of work, but mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. So, yeah, but you got, you have a uh, Nathy helping you out as well, right? For like social mm -hmm. media side of things, right? Yeah. Cause I hate doing the social media. It's fair enough. Miserable. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, I brought her on to do that. And of course, uh, Sarah, uh, from fiction fans is, is my mm -hmm. partner and she does all of our graphics and stuff like that. Awesome. And and how are you, you know, feeling about it, being able to work with the, like the self-pub and indie communities and, and being able to boost those authors and, and give them a chance to get more, like more eyes on their work and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's the whole reason I started doing it to begin with. Um, like you said, at the beginning of the show, um, self-published and indie authors, it's, it's really difficult. You know, they, they have to do so much and wear so many hats. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought if we could help them in, in a small way, you know, get them a few more readers, get a few more eyes on their work, um, then, you know, I, I wanted to do it. So That's awesome, dude. And uh, Connor, I know you have something prepared for us. He's going to do a little live reading from his upcoming book. If, uh, if you're ready to go, then uh, oh, yeah. hit us, buddy. Yeah, it's a, a trim reckoning. The basic plot is it's um, quadruplet royals ha uh, having a, a civil war kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I just picked the first like 500 words of the book. Uh, That's perfect. No, I love All it. Right. Yeah. So I can start at any time. Go for it, buddy. All right, cool. I was six years old the first time mom threatened to sew my mouth shut. She got the needles out and everything, I swear. And, and in her defense, I was a chaotic little shit at that age. 
And while this incident never managed to convince me that it was ever worth it to shut the fuck up, that afternoon I spent with the back of my head pressed against the cold basement cement did teach me that I had to get away. From her, from dad, my siblings, from Mercy House. It took me another 12 years to actually work up the courage, but I got there, eventually. Took up a job in Blackheath House and everything until, oh, hmm, how to put this? Let's say you get a letter. Let's say there have been a lot of them before this. Let's say the people sending the letters are angry and you've been avoiding them. Let's even suppose they might have valid reasons to be angry. So when the next one arrives and it threatens everything you've worked to build, threatens to tear down who you've worked to be, all because you refuse to embroil yourself in their insipid games, hypothetically, can you see why I'd be upset? Honestly, I was surprised it took them five years to find the words to express exactly how much and in what ways they wanted to hurt me for leaving and how badly they wanted me back. Maybe surprise isn't the right word. The letter inspired something closer to fear and alarm and sheer fucking panic. It's a funny thing, panic. It's got a way of getting you on your feet, making you want to move like your body wants to match the speed of its thoughts. But sometimes those thoughts are stuck on hamster wheels that spin and spin until you're sweaty and exhausted and you can't breathe because your heart is fogging up the hollow of your throat. And then you look around and realize you never actually got anywhere. I couldn't figure out what to do on my own. I needed help, advice. I had to talk to Avram. I navigated Blackheath's house, labyrinthine hallways, the twisting corridors, the limestone tunnels, with my mind snarled in hysteria. I passed windows made of orange plasma, it helped to keep the ghosts out. They wavered softly when the wind howled, bending inwards to receive it, growing big distended bellies every time the wind swelled against them. I slipped past chamber doors and set with heraldry, fesses and ghouls, chevrons and borgers, until one stood out completely blank. I heard myself knocking loudly, insistently, my knuckles buzzing with the impact. I don't know how long it took before Avram answered my insistent pounding. Time was runny around the edges while I did it. Clarity only bothered to show up when he did. He answered the door wearing night clothes and looking ludicrous without his glasses. It was so different I hardly noticed he had no shirt on. He squinted, eyes adjusting to the hallway light. Peter? Avram! It was the first time I'd spoken since I received my sibling's threats, which meant my mouth still had to catch up with my thoughts. I wish I'd practiced what I would say to him. Come with me, quickly. I need my injections. That's where I had to cut it off. Dude, that was great. Sean Sean Conley from Fanfly Addict said, now that's an opening line. And I totally agree, man. That is mm, beautiful. Yeah. It's like just the right amount of like Connor, just like masochism and humor and all of it coming together. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, like man. Really Thank good. You. Oh, Thank you. Dude, I cannot wait to read this. And, uh, you know, when, when are you hoping to get this out? Uh, what's the current plan? Um... I should be sending it. I'm doing the final pass right now before I send it off for a copy edit. And then hopefully if all goes well, I should have it out in January of next year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's going to be January or February-ish, uh, but pretty early on next year is what I'm hoping to get. Oh, dude, that's amazing. Thank you so much for reading that to us. I really appreciate it. And uh, where, can, where can people find you on social media, buddy? <clears throat> uh, usually Twitter at, at the CM Kaplan. Uh, it's the same... Uh, handle for Instagram and I don't even know if I have Facebook anymore. <laughs> Facebook's useless, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh, your first book, Sword in the Street, is available now on Amazon, so yeah. people can go go pick that up. I always have to pimp Connor's work for him, so I'm happy to do <laughs> it as always. But to it. That. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tori and Justin, Tori's going to come back on later on to do a live reading from her own work and uh, in the finale. But let us know where people can find you on social media. Oh, uh, I'm at plot underscore head everywhere. Um, at escapist underscore tours. Also for uh, escapist and escapistbookcompany.com. Awesome, man. And uh, I really recommend, I know you haven't updated in a while, but I always recommend it. Go to Fan Addict and check out Justin's Neurodivergent uh, series because it's really, really good stuff with lots of guest posts from authors about neurodivergence and uh, sci-fi and fantasy. So go check that out. Yeah, I actually have uh, like four or five uh, more articles waiting. Nice. We'll be starting up the series again soon. Hell yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Tori, you don't have to tell people your social media right now because you're going to be back 
in a little over an hour. So I will see you soon. Thank you guys so much. And Connor, once again, thank you for doing that live reading, man. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for cool. bringing me on and everything. Yeah. Well, I will see you guys soon. Okay. Love That's you guys. Good. All right. Bye. All right. And next up, we have Kevin Hearn and Delilah S. Dawson joining us again. How are you two? Good. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. So uh, they were both on for episode 14, Humor and Satire in SFF. And really, really good to see you again. Uh, Delilah, what's new? What you been up to? Um, just a whole bunch of book stuff. I just had a book launch last Tuesday called Camp Scare. Um, nice. a horror book, and I'm still riding the, riding the wave from the violence in February. So it's, it's big book year. That's awesome. And did you go to a Star Wars celebration at all? I did. I did. How was that? Um, it was it was different um, just because of COVID. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't as involved in like, you know, dinner and the bar. It was like I run to my panel, I stand outside with my friends, and I go back to my room, take off my mask, and like. Uh, 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 uh. So like it was good, but it was different. Yeah, because I mean, like just from the stories that you two have told, I remember on episode fourteen, I was like blown away by how you two have continuously written the Tales of Pell series together, and I thought it was so awesome. That's basically like. Either you do like a restaurant crawl or like a, a bar crawl or something like that and just like get full of food, get liquored up, be really social, chat and just kind of like let things happen naturally. So I can imagine, you know, going back to Star Wars Celebration and uh, experiencing that in this current time would just be a little bit like, oh, fuck. Like it's a bit <laughs> disappointing, you know? <laughs> you know? I, I ate a lot of room. I ate a lot of room service. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kevin, were you able to make it as well or what you been up to lately? Oh, I've, I've pretty much been um, staying home, and, except I've been out on the road a little bit to uh, promote the re-release of the Iron Druid Chronicles and trade paperback nice. this year. So uh, I've gone out twice. Uh, the first time was with uh, Chuck and Delilah. Woo! And we had a great time in the Northeast together. That was a blast. Yeah. So yeah, you guys, you guys uh, did like a joint um, tour yeah. readings and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, I did it again in June. I went through the American South. And I'll be going out again in, uh, well, next month uh, to uh, do the West Coast for the last four books. So oh, I've been amazing. traveling a little bit. And I just got back from Germany last week uh, where uh, the German readers are, you know, were, were wonderful and awesome. And so uh, I've done quite a bit of traveling this year to make up for, um, you know, not traveling <laughs> at all for the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to do just uh, little events uh, like that with readers um, in small venues uh and i'm not going to be doing conventions anymore just because i think the risk is too high that's uh, fair when you're uh, at a bookstore you know uh you're supporting the bookstore first and foremost you're supporting readers um and also you're reducing your risk because you're not in you know a gigantic place packed full of people who may be asymptomatic you know certainly you're not going there exactly. with the intention of spreading it but you know viruses don't care about your intentions so uh <laughs> Yeah, you, I, I, you're a desirable host. I'll go for you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'd rather not uh, go to that level of risk, and I don't go to conventions mm. anymore. But uh, that, that's kind of what I'm up to right now. I'm just writing a Curse of Krakens and uh, try to get that finished by uh, you know before I go on the road in September. Amazing, man. So you're doing a ton of traveling, but I mean, I, I imagine it was so nice to be able to just hang out with Chuck and Delilah and have that really like intimate experience. You know, like for the two of you, what has it been like to be able to? reconnect with readers for the first time in such a long time but also like i guess booksellers like the people who are working at the bookshops too yeah. you, you want to go first bud i mean that that tour was so amazing because we got to be with our friends for the first time um you know since covid stopped or the world basically <laughs> uh but we did a lot of it by by car we rented a car and we oh nice hours. And so we had a lot of time to chat and to like brainstorm about future projects and mm. ate wonderful food uh and then when we got to places the readers were so engaged and the booksellers were so kind which they they always are because booksellers are the absolute best but it was yeah. so affirming you know just to to see friends and and readers again oh that's amazing kevin what about you what were your thoughts after doing that uh, I kind of wanted to do it again. Uh, and I, and I so would, you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do uh, think that that's kind of the best way to go out on the road these days is mm. uh, to go by car, do a small regional tour and um, 
if you're going by car, then you kind of know everybody else who's in the car and, yeah. and you, and you know, their risk level and all that kind of stuff. You're and and you know, you, you get to, to kick, take care of each other, watch out for each other and, and have a blast together. And uh, we had so much fun. Uh, we loved mystic Connecticut. Uh, mm. We had the best time. That pizza. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, and the donut the next morning. Uh, oh my God, the donuts. Yeah. So, so we, we had like the best time it, everywhere we went and we, we kind of wanted that experience to keep happening. Mm. So uh, I think we'll try to, you know, try to make it happen again at some point in the future because it was just too much fun not to try that again. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a, like a little author road trip. That sounds amazing. <laughs> like that just to be in a car together, hanging out with your friends, like put on some music and everyone's having a great time. And when you're well, in a car, true. The three of us yeah. like, travel really well. We like all the same places and all the same things. So, like when we're mm -hmm. like, we need to stop there. And the three exactly. Like, yeah, we do. We all like, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Ready. Yeah, it's just like if someone has that little ADD moment, we're just like, I want to see that, and everyone's just like, boom, put on the brakes, let's pull over, let's go check it out. You have the flexibility and the freedom to do that. Yeah, we went to the Mystic oh. Aquarium, and we're all like, I wish I had my DSLR. <laughs> oh, so good. And Kevin, what was it like in Germany? I used to live in Berlin, but I haven't been back in oh. like six, six years or so. So it's a. Uh... I have to be honest. I had the most amazing uh, reading experience uh, like or an event experience I've ever had in Germany in a, in a little town called Dillingen, which is in Saarland, which is sort of like the most southernmost kind of remote area uh, of uh, Germany. And mm -hmm. the, the store just had an amazing experience where you do a reading first, then there's a break for, you know, drinks, smokes, whatever, but everybody orders a pizza during that break. Then you come <laughs> back, there's Q and A. So then after the Q and A, there's now another break where the signing begins, but mm -hmm. they've timed it so that now while the signing is happening, the pizza arrives. So oh, it's a dude. pizza party while people are waiting to have their books signed. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, I'm, so everybody's not like, everybody's having a great time while they're waiting and it's none of that, you know, gosh, I'm bored. I'm just standing in line kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I thought that was such a great idea. <laughs> and uh, I, I had uh, just a, a wonderful time, wonderful questions, great readers. Uh, and uh, man, let's have some more pizza parties at, at signings. You know what I'm saying? It's a great time. Oh, that sounds really, really cool. Cause I can imagine it's like, I haven't been in a signing lineup since I went to world con in london back in like 2013 or so yeah. but i remember exactly like that it's like i was on my own so i just kind of had to like curtail the whole boredom thing by just popping in my headphones and listening to a podcast but everyone waiting around it's like the people in the lineup for like george r, r. martin i'm just like good luck you know that's a half a day you know you're yeah. missing some really awesome panels but if everyone's just together it's really jovial we're eating pizza that sounds beautiful yeah. that sounds beautiful idea. yeah oh, amazing and um if you just want to let people know a little bit more about what you're working on, also highly recommend everyone go check out the Iron Druid Chronicles. Um, so the the paperback re-release, is that UK and US or how's that working? It's it's North America. Of course, folks overseas okay. can get them shipped to them, but it's it's mm -hmm. a North America uh, re-release. It has all this uh, extra bonus material in it. So it's really the complete Iron Druid Chronicles, like all these short stories and novellas are being included now. Some of it is brand new, never been printed before. Um, so I'm, I'm super happy that uh, I got the opportunity to do that and uh, thankful to Delray for, for making it happen, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm finishing up A Curse of Krakens right now, which is the third book of the Seven Kennings trilogy. And once I get finished with that, I will be able to write the third book of the Ink and Sigil series. Amazing. Awesome. Busy, busy. Yeah. Also, the cover the cover art on that uh, on the um, Iron Druid Chronicles re-release is like mm, gorgeous. Gorgeous yes. stuff. All hail Sarah J. Coleman, who is the artist in the UK who, who did those. Amazing. And uh, Kevin, where can people find you on social media? Um, I'm just at Kevin Hearn, uh, both on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, my website is kevinhearn.com. Awesome. And Delilah, what you've been working on, like what's coming up next and where can people find you on social media? Yeah. So like I said, Camp Scare and the Violence came out this year. Uh, my next book is the third and last in my Minecraft Mob Squad trilogy. It's called Damn. Don't Fear the Creeper. Uh, they'll be out in November as well as the paperback of the violence. Then next year, I have a couple secret projects. We've announced a Star Wars project. Uh, so, so more good stuff to come. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Delilah S. Dawson. 
Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for coming back. Honestly, it was really, really good to see you. And yeah, we'd love to have you back on the podcast at some point, but best of luck with everything that's coming up. Kevin, with your traveling in September. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Adrian. All thank right. You. Thank you too. Thanks. Bye. All right, guys. So this is a bit of a special segment where I'm going to be doing a live reading from my very own book. So as we were talking about at the beginning with uh, Peter Hartog and Patricia A. Jackson, I'm doing a uh, writing critique group with them. And the project that I'm currently working on is called Spore City, which includes some of the artwork that I've done back here. So this is all artwork that I drew myself as a former tattoo artist. I thought it would be amazing to write my own book and then also do the illustrations for it. So the project has been in the works for quite a long time in terms of how it's existed in my head. Uh, I'm a huge fan of cyberpunk and I love mushrooms. So I wanted to unite those two into a story and Spore City is what has birthed from that. And it was honestly not until last year, until October, November, when I was uh, starting up this critique group with Peter Hartog, with Dan Stout's help, that I really started writing this book, started working on it in earnest. And I'm so happy with how it's progressing and where it's gonna continue to go uh, from here. But I wanted to do a live reading of the prologue for the book for all of you. <clears throat> So I will read the prologue and then uh, afterwards I can do a little bit of a synopsis to get you better acquainted with the world of Spore City. So. Here we go. Prologue, burst forth. I am colonized. It burrows into my mind, imprints on my skull, envelops my brain. It consumes me bit by bit. I know it. I can feel it. Something happens beneath the surface, wriggling whispers revealing an alien presence. Clutching the slimy cold porcelain of the toilet, I feel tiny fingers probe and creep under my skin, break through. My arms and leg are blotched with patches of expanding mold, reds, greens, blues, and yellows. Unnatural, a rainbow of conquest lit by the pale white flickering of the cheap bathroom light. I sense something wrap around my organs, everything tightening, moisture leached away by thirsty strands, tightening, tightening, tightening. I vomit, a wretched mix of bile and stomach acid that burns my throat and floods my nostrils, but the toilet bowl is coated in something else, a coppery brown sludge. Minute spores begin to cloud the air, musty, thick. My right eye goes blurry, and a brief glimpse in the mirror confirms why. Fine white filaments, a dense network, spread from the corner where tears should form. Mycelium. That's a word I learned when I first came to this fucking place. This fucking hellhole of an island. This fucking alien city. I hear myself cry, but don't feel any wetness form. Instead, just the full body heaving of my naked frame as I lean forward and pry my eyelids apart with sludge and vomit speckled fingers. There are no tears never will be again. Distant murmurs flutter across my mind and echo as if reaching out from inside. Foreign voices, the accents familiar. They flutter, blur, commingle. Who are you? Why have you come here? Agaricans, filthy mushroom-headed spore sacks that call this city home. I feel myself shutting down, weighed upon by whatever is happening to me, by this place, these people, if you can even call them that. I watch the tendrils spread across my eye, reach toward my blue, my gray blue iris, clawing from my cornea. More of them creep from the other eye, then from my nose and my ears and under my fingernails and toenails and asshole and pe penis and every goddamn opening on my body, tickling, itching, pricking, consuming. Every surface of my body stings, it fucking stings. My fist launches out, connecting with the mirror in a moment of unconscious, unflinching anger. Distorted fragments ripple out from the point of contact, a bloody mix of flesh and glass. My clenched hand trembles, throbs with pain, blood dripping across a web of shards. I close my eyes, wanting to rip them out and toss away the only things that can see how I'm changing. Am I dreaming? Is this a nightmare? What the hell did I sign up for? 
A scratchiness builds up in my lungs, rises through my windpipe. It irritates up, 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 and I cough uncontrollably. Again and again, hack and croak, copper spittle spraying the mirror. My throat throbs, scolded from vomit, and it tightens, the space filling with something that is crawling up from the inside. My insides lurch and I double over, crying empty tears, heave and heave and a twist of my lungs, a gasp out of breath, a clench in my heart. Needles of pain course through my veins and bones. I'm on the floor, a twisted form, wheezing as every last breath is squeezed out of me by an invader. And all I want is to be in my bed, to lie there and look at the stained ceiling and drift away. The voices return. They scream, cry, probe, blame. It hurts. It burns. What have you done? I pant and crawl out of the filthy bathroom in a blur of awkward motion and pain. My stomach scrapes against the apartment floor, layers of skin and mold peeling off, a wet trail as I inch closer to the bedroom. Mycelium coats my eyes, clutches them and wrings them dry. It feels like sandpaper. I rasp and choke, body twisting, eyes blurring, as I use my memory of the small space to find the bedroom door. Raw digits clutch, clutch the door frame, and I pull myself through, barely able to see. In frantic motions, I flounder forward, legs kicking out with whatever energy they have left, clipping the door and slamming it shut, extending my near lifeless hands and forearms forward. One after the other, like a good soldier, I drag my flaying body over the itchy, cheap smelling synthetic carpet and toward the musty mattress. One inflamed finger at a time, I grasp the mattress. There's a burning sensation beneath my fingernails, as if they're about to pop off, and air whistles through my tightening throat. I wrestle myself on top and roll over, flop down. A puff of stale air, mold, and dead skin is thrown around me, drifting into congested airways. I curse my stupidity for leaving the motherland, for coming here. All I see is faded white now. No ceiling, nothing, just mycelial white. Then more voices, more pain. You did this to us, outsider. We are broken, dying. Why, why, why? I want to scream, hoping that will expel whatever the fuck is inside me to, out into the ether of this horrible world, but I can't. My eyes bulge, my lungs dehydrated, my throat constricted. I force myself to scream and it only echoes in the depths of a mind that is no longer my own. I can feel them inside me, working their way through, cell by cell, a network of colonizers that eat away, consume and convert, decompose what is not yet decayed. A flood of voices rushes into my mind, jumping across synapses in an all out assault. Some of them meld together, and boom, in unison, you have taken everything from us. You bring nothing but pain and destruction. This is our land, our home, our world. Leave, colonizer. The voices sweep across my consciousness. They torment me, pounding, shouting, and reverberating in every direction. Millions of them, a dissonant deluge, a chorus that sings an angry lament. Each one overlaps the other in yells, cries, and whispers. So much sorrow and hatred and agony. Colonizer, colonizer, colonizer. Part of me wants to give up, let go, shut it all off and embrace the silence. So I let go, if only for a moment. My whole body begins to break and contort, immeasurable pain as bones snap and I'm ripped apart from the inside. My head throbs incessantly, full of echoing voices, pressure building on the edge of my skull, Pushing, pushing, pushing. Leave, colonizer, leave. What feels like thick stems force through themselves out through my mouth and ears and nostrils. An earthy, pungent smell that creeps through, chokes me, deafens me. Die, die, die. My eyes are squeezed from their sockets as something pushes out. Then my rib cage tightens, finally wrenches open with splintered fractures and cracks as skin stretches and my chest splits open with a muted, sickening pop. I can barely hear, see, or smell, and the pain is so fucking much, but so constant that it almost feels normal. And in this new normal, I know when my organs fail, one after the other. 
my heart ruptures with an unbearable tightness, and my brain hangs on for one last second before it all bursts forth. And that is the prologue for Spore City. So I'm really, really excited about what this novel has become, what it is going to be. Obviously, this prologue is, you know, a draft version and it might change in the future. But what you can expect from this novel is essentially, you know, cyberpunk elements, lots of fungal tech, some really cool stuff. And the central story focuses around three characters, a fungal detective who's out of his wits and sort of fed up with uh, life in the city, a gangster tattoo artist who is searching for his mother, but also trying to wrangle the responsibility of being part of a, a gang, as well as you know, having his close friends and, and being involved in their lives. And the third character who is a corporate spy who is secretly uh, stealing documents and tech and IP from a big uh, mega corporation. So look forward to more Sports City in the future. And uh, thank you all for, for listening to my live reading. And I'm really, really excited to have my next guests coming up. They're all here with me right now. First off is E.G. Radcliffe. Next up is Andrea Stewart and K. K. S. Veloso. How are y'all doing? Good. Good. Good to see you all again. <laughs> I, I imagine you you probably caught my my live reading, right? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> Thank you. This whole reaction. Thank you. Yeah, probably put everybody off mushrooms for a little while, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love a good mushroom when they're not mm. under your skin, you know? Yeah, when they're not like bursting forth from your mouth and your nose and stuff like they're that. They're in a but... burger, yeah. they're really good. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, it's really, really good to see you all again. It's uh, It's been, a, you know, a few months, um, but a lot has been happening. You know, Andrea, you had a baby, so huge congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I moved with it. Why am I just yeah. looking at you? <laughs> that's it's amazing all, like, all in the closet over here so we gotta but how are you how are you feeling having moved like so soon after your after your birth i will say i do not recommend it do not move with a newborn and a toddler <laughs> if possible oh and then also we went through the whole home buying process at the same time mm -hmm. which was um, a freaking nightmare my husband wrote a script to find out how much documentation we sent for the underwriter and it was over 2500 pages <laughs> holy shit That's yeah crazy. so we we're doing that and like taking care of the baby and, and then you know setting up to move it was fun well congratulations to you that's huge thank you and your new neighborhood your new neighborhood looks amazing by the way oh it's really gorgeous. really nice it's really walkable so I'm, I'm very thankful for that so if i you know can't think of an idea or i'm stuck on something go for, go for a walk yeah Perfect. And how's everything going with uh, the bone shard, the bone shard war? Oh, it's great. So I just handed in copy edits and I'm expecting the proofs back by the end of the month. So it's all moving forward. Woo. When And that's probably going to be like spring 2023 or something like that. Yes. April 2023. Oh, amazing. Congratulations. And Kay, how have you been? How was the uh, BC day long weekend and all that fun? Oh, that was, it was crazy. We tried to, <laughs> I was telling Adrian, we tried to get on the ferry without reservations, which is not recommended. Amateur. But we had a party of uh, four cars. Oh, no. So I had like my whole family, including my, my senior parents. So it, it was fun. It was a family adventure. <laughs> yeah, but that's the best part. You're all together and just, yeah. uh, I mean, did you go through uh, Swartz Bay or did you go through Horsh or um, up north in uh, Nanaimo? So going there, we went to through Nanaimo, mm -hmm. and then going back, we went to because because going back, we were like, I looked at the the ferry conditions and all the ferries were full, so I told my family we're gonna have to drive all the way straight to Victoria <laughs> because there's like there's still reservations on like the 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. so we managed to nab those. 
and then we just went straight to Victoria, which is good because uh, some of my family members have never been, so oh, cool. they got to see everything. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry for everyone listening or watching. Kay and I are having like a little deep cut British Columbia <laughs> conversation yeah. about fairies because that's I used just to like take life. that ferry a lot too when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. you know what, what we're talking about. <laughs> the yeah. pain. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kay, what you've been working on? How's how's life in general? Oh, it's good. You know, there's there's I have a few projects that I have stewing in the background, but the the main one is that I'm gonna have a Kickstarter soon. Cool. And I'm gonna the, probably in the next couple of weeks I'm gonna announce that. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be exciting. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, whenever that's live, just send me, send me a DM and I'll, I'll spread the word as much oh, as I can. Sure. Yeah. You gotta learn, yeah. learn as much as you can from Brandon Sanderson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a brand new, it's a brand new novel. So like it's a brand new series, but it's in a, in, it's in the shared universe of my previous books, mm -hmm. but you know, anyone new to my books could jump right into this one. It's going to be a little bit unique. It's more a magical school kind of mm -hmm. deal so mm. why did you decide to go with the kickstarter for this one uh th there's there's a number of reasons I, i'm gonna lay it out when i when i do the announcement okay. but you know i think it's it feels right for the project <laughs> no i'm really really excited yeah. and obviously it's like you have a world to build upon uh some established books and everything like that established fans so yeah no, i'm super excited to see what you got coming yeah, I've, I've never like I've never shown the cover to anyone. Like only like a couple of people mm -hmm. who are working with me, and like everybody's really excited just from the cover alone. It's just it's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, and your series already has amazing cover art anyway. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. this one's really good. <laughs> Damn! Oh, I'm so excited for that. And EG, how have you been? Like, what's uh, what's going on? I've been good. Um writing new series still working at the haunted libraries it's two libraries now they're both haunted um, <laughs> yeah unless the, by... me from the first one but... yeah i'm just gonna say was that by choice or just like <laughs> no that just happened Something about you <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, it's fun i was talking to some co-workers and they were like yeah no there's definitely two distinct ghosts here um we like one of them and we hate one of them and the one that they hate is just like kind of a freak, but the one that they like just swaps stuff. So if you leave out something new, it'll like replace it with something old. So we like- That's cool. Yeah, it's- That's, it's that's quirky. It's oh, like... losing new stuff. <laughs> one time it left a penny on every single surface, but like a really old penny. And I'm like, bro, but anyways, that's cool. That's amazing. I'm just very- it too I'm yeah sold. But like a library a library ghost is probably just like the most chill ghost you could ever imagine like they're yeah. reading books and just like playing tricks on people yeah i can get behind it and i've worked enough midnight shifts to not be skeptical anymore so yeah <laughs> amazing and what have you been working on in terms of writing um i have been kind of working through a new series honestly it's been going a bit slower because when i was writing my three books I had like a word goal every day mm. um, because I had a deadline that I had to get them out by and I don't have a deadline this time so I kind of was like it'll happen and uh, <laughs> it has been happening but it's been happening at a much more relaxed pace which isn't a bad thing mm -hmm. but it feels weird to not be like constantly um, churning it out because I've just got other stuff happening but it is going down and i'm very excited about it <laughs> it is happening because i remember when we spoke in march you were just like yeah i was really just not I, I wouldn't say like strict with yourself but it's just like you're very firm about like writing every day and keeping up a good routine and you released three books in a very short amount of time mm -hmm. so yeah so it's it's weird to not be doing that as much i can't say it's bad weird but um it has given me some time to work on other projects. Like I'm in the middle of a sewing project right now where I'm recreating nice. this like uh, 12th century um, outfit. I'm going to wear it to a Renaissance fair, but let me tell you, 12th century cool. are not fun to follow. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have like modernized versions and instructions that you can follow. They do not, unfortunately. Damn. I mean, I'm sure that somewhere there are, but I have not found any. And so I'm just doing my best. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds amazing. Send me a photo when the, when all that's done. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I'm even like hand dyeing certain patterns because there's no like fabric out there now that like has crazy. these. Yeah, so I'm excited. But I have time to do things like that, which is good. I applaud your dedication. That is amazing. <laughs> All right, we uh we got to wrap up before the next round of guests comes in. Uh, if anyone wants to check out EG and Andrea, we're both on episode seventeen talking about writing sequels. Um, Andrea oh, yeah. was also yeah. talking about food and fantasy, all that delicious stuff. And Kay was on martial arts in SFF uh, episode. Tw sorry, I think it was nineteen. Um, but if you could all let everyone know where they can find you on social media, I'll start with you, Andrea. Oh, yeah, I'm um, at Andrea G. Stewart on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome. And Kay, where can people find you? Uh, just go to my website. It's www.ksvilioso.com. Awesome. <laughs> and everything else is there. <laughs> and, look, and look forward to her new uh, Kickstarter coming out in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Awesome. Right and EG, where can people find you? I'm at EG Radcliffe on Instagram and Twitter, and that's also egradcliffe.com is the website. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you all so much. Honestly, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it was quick, but it was really, really good to see you, and I hope everything goes well. Andrea with uh, two kids in the new place. I hope everything goes smooth <laughs> with the move and all that. Um, yeah, thank you all so much. I, I hope to see you again soon sometime. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Cool. So we are just waiting for Sebastian de Castell and Ben Galley. I hope I didn't fuck up the times, but Ben is here. All right. Ben, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, great to be here. Literally just stuck to my toe trying to oh, <laughs> get no. my laptop in the right place. So Shit, I look a little flushed. That's it. But other than that, no complaints. <laughs> Just a stub toe, nothing much That's else. Yeah. <laughs> why is that the worst pain though? <laughs> I have no idea. Because it's pain. it's always unexpected. Ah yes. It's yeah. like getting uh hitting your funny bone and then you just think like like fuck that's unbearable and it's too much <laughs> the yeah. ironicus bone that's why i call that one <laughs> but i appreciate that you're in like a nice flower shirt over in vancouver summary. yeah very summary, summary, man. Yeah. <laughs> how's uh how's life treating you in vancouver it is actually yeah wonderful um vancouver island was great um my years there were really fun but uh yeah there's just so much more to do in the city it's vibrant close to the, uh, the mountains um yeah, living by the sea is always fun. We've got beaches, mountains, forests. Like, you can't really complain too much in Vancouver. So, yeah, getting a lot of writing done as well as uh, <laughs> spending a lot of money on food and drink. I would have, yeah, dude. I mean, I lived there for four and a half years. And yeah, I was, I was at university during most of that time, but it's like, shit. Anytime Spencer. we had, dude, it's super expensive. Everything. <laughs> it's like bars, Absolutely. rent, yeah. all that stuff. So, it's like, you know, that that uh that special edition Kickstarter got to be bringing in some cash for you to survive <laughs> yeah. in Vancouver. Well, I have to carry on writing. I got no freaking choice. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, Do you uh, how has that been with um with that special it's a 10 year anniversary edition right it is i actually have yeah. one right here <laughs> yes you do yeah you told me you were going to show it off i told you yeah 20 of them so these are ones without the sprayed edges just yet but either way this is it so you can see the, the gold stamped cover Man. custom spine and then the back one as well which the runes can all be translated mm. as well and then full color interior uh, which is here yeah, see full color maps done by oh, man. give us a close-up of that that looks beautiful <laughs> there we holy go. crap yeah and then we've got Love all the that. artwork through it as well the artwork obviously is mostly black and white but there's a splash of red in each bit so mm -hmm. so we're gonna find one there so that's one of the first ones the one yes yeah, so i'm really proud to have worked with the Soroka Corin on the maps dennis corner is my artist who's done nine illustrations per book and mm -hmm. yeah it's just it's been a bit of a delay with you know a lot of shipping and paper and all sorts of uh, troubles going on in the world but yeah worth every minute and uh thanks to my back is it's actually a reality so yeah couldn't have done it without you people out there and can't wait. i mean i've just got the cover for the second one already mm -hmm. done good to go it looks even better <laughs> Damn. yeah sean in the comments said i got mine a couple weeks ago Fucking beautiful so <laughs> thank you <laughs> and then crystal says bc stands for bring cash and i totally agree <laughs> 
<laughs> she's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not wrong. Yeah, it's oh. uh, it is one of these places, but I mean, it is yeah, beautiful BC at the same time. You know, mm. what a warm and hot as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, not as hot as last year, but yeah, it's a good place to live. How's it been for you in terms of like balancing? You know, obviously you want to spend out time, some time, mm. but also writing and 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 keeping up uh, with that. Yeah, it's just due uh, to my kind of strict, strict-ish schedule. It kind of like the summer and other projects kind of move it around a bit. But yeah. otherwise, yeah, it's just a simple case of just getting up early, getting the words in, um, not too early. <laughs> Some people get up at like four and five and <laughs> six because you know, they have to balance, you know, kids, family, work and stuff like that. But I yeah. do like getting up early, using the morning, um, hopefully, you know, if everything goes right, getting about 4K words in before midday. Nice. Clock. Um, and then basically, yeah, working on other projects, author admin, all the other fun stuff that we authors have to do, Facebook ads, spreadsheets, all that kind of, yeah, more, well, less creative, less that is, that stuff. Is, that is, that is self-pub author stuff right ah, there. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. So you got to work you know, the business of side, of course. You've got to do the business. That's the thing. We are writers and business people at the same time, which yeah. is sometimes hard to mesh the two together because, you know, sometimes you have to be very analytical and it's a different part of your brain than the creative side. Um, and I don't work well with numbers. <laughs> I don't like numbers, uh, even though I've got a marketing background. Like, I love a spreadsheet, it has to be said, uh, but it's not something I enjoy. I love a spreadsheet so long as there's not a single number on there. That's it, yeah. <laughs> That's me. Um, but yeah, I just, I love like a, a blank spreadsheet, like you can mix these things and do all the little formulas and stuff. So there's lots of those for Kickstarter. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, everyone has to do it. That's the admin. And mm -hmm. yeah, I try and balance that literally between, you know, halving up my day um and focusing on whatever is most important to me and my books at mm -hmm. that point so that's where the writing comes first you know get those projects done always thinking about new books for you know, getting new books out for the readers and then yeah after that anything goes really and then try and enjoy my life in the afternoons evenings that's yeah. yeah but then that that's what was so cool about hearing what you had to say what everyone had to say back on episode 20 when we were talking about like the different strands of publishing and mm. and just being able to hear like all the ins and outs of like, yeah, depending on what kind of author you want to be, there's like so much mm -hmm. different layers of technicality that you have to deal with. It's like, of course, if you're an author, you're, a, you know, a self-owned business, you're a human yep. being, a creative yep. individual. But then it's like, if you go into traditional publishing, there's a lot of, you know, dealing with the publishers and the editors and, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But then as a self-pub author, like what you said, there's mm -hmm. like all this business side that is a little bit obscured for a yes. lot of people yeah. until they realize like oh shit i have to like put on my entrepreneur hat and really mm -hmm. bust my ass in a way that i didn't really yeah. expect beforehand that's that's exactly right it's you know a lot of people that because you know I, I help other authors go through the the self-publishing process and the marketing processes with this ease uh, even though they have no <laughs> they're amorphous and never ending and always changing um but yeah it's, it's something that i always say to, to baby authors or authors who are looking for a bit of advice is that you have to approach this like a business if you want to see you know commercial success yeah. um if you know you just put a book out there to put a book out there that's excellent that's awesome that's very worthwhile um but yeah if you want to make money and become a professional the part of the professional is being a business and you know exactly. having some business acumen having some you know personal control as well you know just being self-employed it might sound like bliss but you do have to <laughs> just actually still get up and work that's and what it is yeah. yeah have lunch breaks and be strict with your time so you need that sort of uh, <laughs> that personal strictness as well which a lot of people either aren't used to or haven't done before or maybe just don't have the right mindset for it right you know there's a there's a lot of stuff to be done here so yeah. all sorts of sirens it's it's vancouver <laughs> it's vancouver man it's just flashback <laughs> yeah. i live right next to the hospital and like one police station as well so i oh, do get man. quite a lot uh, but yeah uh, not a lot of people or not everyone has that business mind or could marry up the creative side with the business mm -hmm. side so yeah it's a lot of a uh, lot of learning to be done um and yeah it's some days easier than others <laughs> some days are just you know you can't write uh, yeah. you get too much on the on the actual business side of your mind and, yeah, you just got to work but, that self-discipline yeah yeah that's it exactly but with the for, writing but for you, it's like, what have you been working on lately? What's coming up soon? Ooh, lots and lots of stuff. So aside from the Kickstarter, um, which is still being fulfilled, and the second one's about to launch soon, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on my serial novel, uh, my web novel, uh, which is Somebody Has to Be the Dark Lord, uh, which is kind of, it was it just started out as a fun project. It was one of those 
ideas that for some reason are so new and shiny i have to just put everything else aside nice. and start working on that one <laughs> uh, which i normally you got do. you got wrapped up in the in the, in the machine <laughs> it's it too sexy. i just i could not stop <laughs> thinking about it and uh it's kind of like it's a book within a book as well as a web novel which i've never done before i've never mm -hmm. sat down and you know promised my, myself and my fans and my readers that i'm going to launch a chapter a week which is something that i've I've stuck to. There's been like one or two de uh, days of kind of delay here and there, but either mm. way, it's a kind of a new writing process for me. Even though a lot of it is all planned, I am literally writing and putting it out there on a weekly basis. So it's dark fantasy. It's set awesome. in kind of a Renaissance uh, era, kind of Mediterranean, North African, Middle Eastern world. Uh, it's female main protagonist, uh, even though she is evil as fuck. <laughs> 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 she is. It's quite funny because obviously, as a as a writer, you know, you kind of take on um and some of the personalities of who you're writing or at least pour your personality into them and kind of unlock areas in yourself to yeah. see if you can kind of you know find inspiration and and flesh out that character and i'm just like okay all those evil things i'd always wanted to do with other characters that are good or well morally grave at least kind of on the on the hero side of things mm -hmm. i can now do with dwelling so she's oh, just perfect. murdering and stealing all over the place and it's uh it's kind of fun <laughs> it's, it's kind of designed to be very very fast-paced and yeah, it's a book within a book. So she's constantly taking the piss out of, you know, fantasy tropes, but also author tropes. She's recounting it. So she's sort of writing it herself. So they get to put in all these little author jokes and she like literally one stars a book she finds in a tavern and things like that. So it's <laughs> like so I'm trying to go Deadpool meets um, kind of Wolf of Wall Street sort of thing, which is, yeah, she wants Damn. power and money and maybe a bit of revenge here and there. So yeah, that's been really fun. Otherwise, um, I've got a new series coming out this year. Um, which is called Demon's Reign, co-written with David Estes. And that is the first book of the Bloodwood Saga. And that's going to be coming out hopefully in October. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is a, well, I describe it as Avatar meets Venom. Avatar being the blue Ooh. people in the trees rather yeah. than the airbending. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Mile High Trees, Rideable Hummingbirds, um, very, very secondary world fantasy, but again, epic progression. And yeah, can't wait to see what people make of that one. Probably yeah, one of the weirdest sounds... books I've written yet. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome, though. And uh, where can people find you on social media, Ben? Usually loitering anywhere. Um... <laughs> <laughs> on the corner of East and Hast Hastings and Twitter. Main Street. That's me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, you can find anything at linktree forward slash Ben Galley. Uh, I'm Ben Galley, uh, author on Facebook and Instagram, at Ben Galley on Twitter, TikTok, and all the others. And otherwise, Amazing. yeah, bengalley.com. It's got all my maps, books, links, info future projects, all sorts of fun stuff. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for taking the time. Sebastian couldn't join us, but uh, we were going to talk some yeah. shit about Nicholas Eames, but oh, uh, God, yeah. that, <laughs> that son of a bitch. Eames. Learn <laughs> how to spell, there. learn how to but, spell wild. That's it. But uh, yeah, wild. shout out to, shout out to Nick and, and uh, Sebastian and hope to see those guys soon. But Ben, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you, Adrian. And congrats on an awesome you know, podcast, an awesome year and the anniversary. Thank you, buddy. Thank you sir. All right. Thank I'll talk good. to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. And now we have CL Pirlo and Ron Walters joining us. How are you two? Hello. Hey. Hi. Good to see you again. Sorry for the little bit of delay, but uh, ah, no very, worries. very happy to see you again. Ron's got his lighting fixed. No, you know what? <laughs> the sun is down and I'm in a completely different section of the room. So <laughs> one day I, I will have my space, but until then. You'll, you'll figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. How have you been? Not bad. We got back from the States a week ago, so jet lag is finally, like, wearing off, mm -hmm. which is great. Nice. So, yeah, other than that, yeah. How was your, I, I mean, you told me that you were going to a bunch of different places. It wasn't necessarily, like, a road trip because you were flying. Yeah, I came to flew one place. We ran up the East Coast to, like, South Carolina, North Carolina, for mm -hmm. Maryland, Cape Cod, and then back to Georgia. It was a lot. How, how was it though? I mean, you spent a lot of time with family and, and probably had a chance yeah. to catch up with people. I mean, yeah, it was good. We haven't seen a lot of these people in like, I realized my aunt, I hadn't seen her in 10 years. Oh, wow. I mean, COVID alone broke it up. So it had been four years since my kids have been around my parents, you know, so mm -hmm. it, was nice. it was good to catch up. Dude, that's awesome. But, yeah, it was fun. You yeah, happy to be back. Happy to be yeah. back in Germany. Yeah. yeah. Although we're in a heat wave right now. So that's like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Germans just strip down naked and just go into the Dude, lake. Like, the they, don't, they don't, the older generation doesn't like fans. Like they think that they give you cold. <laughs> My house is like, I've got a dozen fans like positioned. 
perfect. Strategically. Exactly. Strategic fan placement. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> awesome. And CL, how have you been? How's uh, class going? How's uh, life? Pretty good. I don't start classes for another couple weeks. Uh, my strategy now is if I never log into my student portal and see the exact day when classes start, then they just never start. <laughs> Just like ignorance is bliss kind of situation. Exactly. I never fail my classes if I don't check my grades. Classes never start if I don't check when they begin. Like that's how it works, right? I still have like weird dreams or like the occasional nightmare where I just think like I've missed class or like I missed like a series of classes and it's just like the end of the semester and I have to write the exam and I'm just like, I don't know shit. And I still have nightmares about that even like school 10 years later. It really does fuck you up. But fuck that, fuck that school. stress <laughs> lasts a long time. It doesn't fade. <laughs> Not at all. But have you been able to do some writing now that you're on summer break? Oh yeah, no, I've, uh, my next book is uh, with my agent right now. Hopefully that'll go on submission soon. And I've started writing the like, you always start with like a query synopsis first 25 pages uh, as kind of like a package proof of concept thing. So mm -hmm. I've started that for my next project. Awesome. Oh, I'm really excited. And Ron, you've been working on something for a while too. How's that going? Yeah, uh, my agent has it right now. So hopefully he doesn't despise it. <laughs> That's always the goal, right? You know, right? I mean, people, Low bar, I never, whatever. I never had a book take that. It took me nine months to write it. I've never had a project take that long. I mean, there were like, there were interruptions, but it was just, ugh. and I don't know, maybe it was like the sophomore slump that I was like, oh, I'm never going to get that. I've written books before, but mm -hmm. man, it took a lot. So I'm, why, it better be good. Why, why did you feel this one in particular was so tricky? I don't know. I think, well, one, because I actually pants this one and the last few I didn't completely plot out, but I had like a page synopsis to kind of run with. And this one I knew a fair amount, but I didn't know the end. And I mean, I kind of, I knew where I wanted things to end up, but I didn't really know how like the last third got there. Mm. And so that threw me off for a long time. And then I realized the mid stuff in the middle was just wrong. So I wound up stopping like two thirds through and going all the way back to the beginning and Chat. just rewriting it was terrible it was the it was but i re, it's i think it's great it i'm happy with it now so you know hopefully he likes it and we can get that out there and maybe it'll sell i'm excited to read it man it's like more video game stuff we just uh we just need more video game stuff i swore i wasn't going to but yeah it's got video game stuff you did it in like a roundabout way but it's still exactly. <laughs> and uh cl what have you been playing lately uh, honestly, it's all been Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, I still, still, yes, I became so. There's so much You're content obsessed. in that game. Like, there's <laughs> just so much stuff in it. Um, I do tend to focus on one or two games at a time, and I'll just kind of like swap back and forth between playing them. Um, yeah. because I'm I'm that person where I really like to get like the best in show gear and start doing the high end content for whatever's mm -hmm. current. And it's really hard to do that with a lot of games at once. Um, just cause you know, the meta for that's generally always changing or, True. uh, getting tweaked with like each new update. So I find that if I try to focus on a bunch of games at once, uh, it bugs me that it's really, uh, unrealistic time-wise to get to that, like best in slot gear and, you know, learning all the strategies and stuff before they change at the next patch. So I, I do generally have to focus on one or two games and unfortunately final fantasy 14 has got me in its grip. <laughs> I am obsessed. It is I'm terrible. Just, I'm waiting for the next time that we talk. It's like a year from now or yeah, something. And just like, she's still playing Final Fantasy. I know. <laughs> like, I, have, I have a friend who I first met, I think, 2015. And she was like, hey, you should play Final Fantasy 14. And I was like, no, I've started a bunch of other games right now. Like, whatever, this is fine. And then I met up with her like in person in 2019 after having met up with her in person multiple times and she was like hey you should play final fantasy 14 i'm like damn still okay <laughs> and then last year when i started playing she was like good i'm still playing it and i was like okay cool that's it's one amazing. of those games all right <laughs> and uh ron what about you what have you been playing lately i haven't played in like a month and a half i mean we're <gasps> well, i know like honestly it took everything in me not to put my little xbox series s in my in my suitcase and take it 
Yeah. To my oh, you house. I know, but that would have been like it's one so level. It's so small, man. It's fine. It is. I mean, it, it really is. And now you can buy like they have these screens that they're expensive, but like the screens you can attach to it and you can play like it, it looks like, like a, a handheld. Screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or like a but, very uh, chonky handheld. But exactly. Awesome. <laughs> you should have brought uh, that. I should have. Yeah. I, I do regret it. But I had who needs to put I, clothes in their suitcase when you could put an Xbox? Like, <laughs> well, you know what's bad about that is that on the way there, we wound up stuffing one of my kids' entire suitcase into mine because I had so little in mine, and we were like, I don't want to check four bags if we can check three. Yeah. So yeah, so I could have easily fit it in there. Um, but no, I was playing Elden Ring obsessively for like you know 150 hours, nothing big. Um, and so now I'm like, I don't know. I'm not sure what I want to play. Like, I don't know what kind of vibe I'm looking for. So I'm having mm -hmm. trouble figuring that out. So I downloaded a bunch of things from Game Pass and I'll eventually land on something that'll obsess, you know, take my time for the next. There's a, there's a bunch of like Yakuza games that are on there now. I saw that. That would be worthwhile checking out. Well, I just, I just downloaded is uh, Road to Yumi. Nice. Um, and I haven't, I'm not, I don't play a lot of side scrollers. So I'm kind of trying to make myself get into them because I've, I kind of write them off because I just I want like the 3D, but mm -hmm. I, it looks the artwork's amazing. Yeah, no, that game looks awesome, and uh, we got to wrap up, guys. We got the next yeah. round of guests, but I really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, CL and Ron were both on episode 21 talking about video games and SFF. CL's book Bluebird and Ron's book Deep Dive both came out this year, so I recommend you check those out if you like video games. And CL, where can people find you on social media? Um, I make it very easy on Twitter. I am at CL Pirlo. Uh, my website is clpirlo.com. Um, I also do uh, editing now. So if you are nice. a fiction writer, um, I do obviously specialize in SFF, but I do all over the board stuff. Um, and you want somebody to take a look at your manuscript, your query, your synopsis, mm -hmm. uh, check out my website, see my rates. They're pretty reasonable. Cool. Just to keep you busy while you're studying and writing books and everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and playing because Final Fantasy with you. I eventually want to go into, you know, I, I like the idea of going into freelance editing as a full-time job. Yeah. Um, and obviously that is something I can, I know very well and can easily mm -hmm. do while I am in school. So everyone check that out and sustain CL's video game habit. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, for video games, right? and uh, Ron, where can people find you? Um, on Twitter, I'm at Roddy and Ron, and everywhere else is Ron Walters Books, website, Instagram, Facebook. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Absolutely. Ron, I didn't comment on your luscious hair, but it's luscious as always. I, you know what? I watched it for you today. Ooh. It's pretty luscious. It was, it was Damn. pretty bad after a few days. So I thought I'm oh. going to see Adrian. It needs to look good. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll see you soon, okay? All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, and next up we have the chaos of Rob J. Hayes, Michael R. Fletcher, Anthony Ryan. How are you, gentlemen? Oh, lovely. Well. <laughs> Mike just always coming with like a really moody introduction. Just it's his outros that are usually better. You know, we all like just like, "I'll oh, see you later," and Mike's always like, "Ta-ta, ciao, tra, tra, tra la la." <laughs> How are you, gentlemen, doing? It's not early, Mike. Come on. No, I, I was that was naughty last night, and now I am living the consequences of my actions. Ah, oh, fair enough. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. We're gonna get to <laughs> Sebastian de Castell was uh, unfortunately missed his segment, so we're gonna get him in here. I don't know if you guys have all met, but Sebastian, hey. welcome to the hey. welcome to the show. Thank you, and and my profound apologies for. It's uh, all good. A, a tech uh, screw up of monumental proportions. It's uh, okay. We, you missed out on the Nick, the Nicholas Eames shit talking. So, <laughs> can I tell you why I was so looking forward to that? <laughs> sure, go for it. Because, so I don't know where the uh, let's shit talk Nicholas Eames concept came up. I th I'm pretty sure it was with a, a podcast called The Grim Dark Podcast first, and um, it was it was pretty early on. Like his book had come out not that long ago, but he was already rising star, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> at the time. Uh, he used to like, for some reason, every, every time he gave an interview, almost like he would mention like how we met and he would severely over attribute 
his getting a book deal to to me just because you know we met we talked i, I saw his book i introduced him to my agent she loved it she already, like anyway. i don't do shit for you man yeah no no it was, it, <laughs> but he was you know and i and and so uh they they called me on and they said oh you know you, you and nick are gonna come on and you guys know each other so you can like kind of razz each other and like say you, you know your stuff's crap <laughs> and um and I thought, Are you sure that's fine? And then, and then they had me on first, and he was coming on uh, halfway through as a sort of surprise. And um, and they brought up that story again about like us meeting in a restaurant and 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 all this stuff. And I and and so I felt like, oh man, I got to clear the air on this. And I said, look, you know, the reason why Nick Hughes is getting famous and got a, a book deal is just because he's an amazing writer. Like it would, he, if he had never met me at some point, you know, an agent, the right agent was going to come along, and he was going to. And then you go, and, and so it was like this almost nice, almost like, you know, hey man, like let's acknowledge greatness for what it is. And and then uh, Nick comes on and I guess he didn't get to hear the first part because he comes on mm -hmm. and go, hey, Sebastian, I really liked like Trader's Blade. I liked it better when it was the Three Musketeers. <laughs> it's <was, laughs> <laughs> so, so it just like, oh my God, you ungrateful piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I made your career. It's like it was, Nick, uh, you're Nick, you're the nicest piece of shit there is. We love exactly. you, buddy. <laughs> hope I, I hope to get him on uh Wizards, Warriors, and Words, because I think uh it'd be awesome to hear Rob and Mike and, and Dirk and Jed chatting with him and uh just chaos. I imagine just, uh, it would just be Mike and him going off on like music references for 40 yeah, years. Holy five exactly. we'll just in the background. These old farts just talking about music. <laughs> <laughs> Back oh, in man. my day. Back in my day when I was in the metal bar. And uh, Anthony, how have you been? How was uh, the release of The Martyr and everything going with that? That's uh, so fine. Yeah. Uh, nothing to complain about anyway. Put it that way. Yeah, no, it's all good. I'm uh, very pleased with it. Amazing. And um, are you already working on a sequel? It's finished. It's in the can. It's finished. Damn, man. The editor, yes. I'm always all about right. ideas. Yeah. Just waiting for editors' comments, which is always so much fun. I'm sure mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone dreams of. Just yeah, editors. That's comments. the only reason to do the job is for editors' comments. And everything else is piffle. I just, I just love editors' comments. Awesome. And Rob, how you doing, bud? Oh, I'm okay. I, I literally forgot about this. So, like five minutes ago, I had like a, a big old <laughs> pie and mashed potato, and I was like, da, 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 and then suddenly, why didn't you bring it on? Like, uh, I, I rushed through it. I, I just like, I suddenly realized that uh, there was something going on and then I had to go and check the time ins again. And I was like, oh yeah, I've got five minutes to eat this pie. Crap. Uh, <laughs> so I shoved it down my face and then ran upstairs. <laughs> I would have been fine if you ate a pie live on air. It would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> just Rob getting crumbs in his beard like a filthy animal. <laughs> No, I don't eat it like that. It's like, oh man, one of the most annoying things about fantasy for me is when people eat in fantasy books and they just spill grease down their chin and stuff. And I'm like, ah, nobody eats like that. Stop it. Yeah. We all eat like, uh, what's his name? Um, in the Lord of the Rings, the guy who's ruling Gondor Denethor. is the steward. Denethor. Everyone eats like Denethor and just fucking drips tomatoes down their face. In, in my <laughs> books, they all eat. In my books, they, uh, they all eat like... Uh, Friar Tuck from Rocket Robin Hood. And if you've ever seen the old <laughs> they every time they would do these little 10, 30 second segments where they introduced the characters all the time because they didn't want to make too many stories. So mm -hmm. they would repeat those. And it would always just be Friar Tuck and, and Friar Tuck. And he like takes a bite of a chicken leg and throws it over his shoulder and apple and throws it. So that's what I just have going on. Like times of total famine, just characters walking around throwing the, the food behind them. And in poor Sebastian's worlds, it's like, who's cleaning this shit up afterwards? Like, who's working at these places? It's how you feed the peasants. You just drop food on the floor and they'll feed on it. It's fine. Yeah. Just eat the scraps, you know? Yeah. Robbed like a king, just chowing on his pie. Oh, Dirk's here, finally. Dirk, where'd you been, buddy? I've been waiting on you guys. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no. I haven't. I'm disappointed. Hello, Hello and sorry. It's all good, man. We got like uh, two I minutes got, to go. Yeah, I got like <laughs> two minutes to say hello. I, it's all Se good. Sebastian, Anthony, hey, I Dirk. know. The, I see those other knuckles. Those other guys every week. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little it. pissed off because I just saw a crawl going on the bottom of the screen promoting like the next segment where apparently it's dick jokes and crotch sniffing, and I'm like, oh yeah, crotch, <laughs> crotch biting, Sebastian. That's the segment crotch we don't want to get on. 
Yeah, I had but... I had them on for a dragons panel, and we just ended up talking about dick jokes and and crotch biting at some point. So biting, yeah, yeah crotch biting. Quinn Quinn okay. Olson has crotch biting in her book. So uh, yeah, oh the, uh... oh, it's stuff that's in the books. <laughs> okay. You can I mean, you can stay on. You can take that books. up with. Sebastian, you can stay on and take that up with Quinn B. <laughs> if you're yeah. no, I, I just, I just, no, the only reason is because, like, I literally just, uh, we just finalized the book I have coming out, uh, a book I have coming out next year that's a new fantasy that has like a four minute extended uh, dick joke, which is not usually my thing. I try to stay away from the dude <laughs> bro stuff, but it's just long and it's very important to the story. And my, and the editor, you know, uh, my beloved editor, Joe Fletcher, was like, uh, you know, let's cut this for time, uh, which was a polite way of saying, let's cut this because it's horrid. Uh, and I, <laughs> I fought child. for it. I was like, you know what? You can publish the book with the joke or you can not publish the book. And that's the, and she said, fine. You can I will draw out. the line at dick jokes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. She said, she said, fine, but we're cutting out your favorite cut of characters and changing the ending and altering the themes, <laughs> eliminating the themes and it'll be a crap cover. I said, okay. <laughs> As long as my joke stays in, man. Yeah. yeah. True to your art. <laughs> <laughs> the book oh, ended man. up just being the dick joke and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a it's like flat like flash be fiction. Worth it. <laughs> Sebastian only releases dick joke flash fiction from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I gotta I gotta bring on this uh, next round to talk about dick jokes and, and crotch biting. But thank you all for uh, joining me today. Thank you all for being on the podcast. Sebastian was on episode five, chatting music and SFF with Anthony Ryan, and Anthony was also on episode twenty for um, traditional indie and self publishing. Rob, Mike, and Dirk have all been on a couple times, and I produced their podcast. So I I've had enough of them, but yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh have enough of us. so have we <laughs> oh thanks man i appreciate that yeah. and uh sebastian if you could let everyone know where they can find you on social media and then we'll go through yeah uh else. it's just to castell.com uh or uh uh i suppose i'm on twitter technically to castell so d-e-c-a-s-t-e-l-l -L. but the easiest way to reach me is is to castell.com and then you can send a lovely form and we can chat by email about dick jokes yeah, it's probably best if I don't get too many of those. I probably, should, I, you know what? I never should have come on. I realized you, now this was you a brought it on mistake. yourself, man. You missed out on our Nick Eam shit talking, and this is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> it's karma. <laughs> the best karma. And uh, Anthony, where can people find you on social media? Uh, AnthonyRyan.net. Uh, links to everything is on there. I'm on Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, but I don't really talk about that anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the martyr the martyr is out now so uh go the check that out now. yes yeah and uh mike where can people find you uh brampton <laughs> that's that's that <laughs> shit <hole. laughs> uh yeah all the usual michael r fletcher.com twitter facebook whatever facebook <laughs> all right I'm, I'm not not hard to find and that's the obsidian really path trilogy the obsidian path trilogy is finally done it's finally done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's harder to not find Michael than it is to find. Yeah. Him. I will, I will actually stalk you. So <laughs> yeah. I am omnipotent <laughs> and creepy <laughs> and Rob, what about you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Rob J. Hayes .co .uk, uh, Twitter at Robert Hayes. And uh, yeah, there's probably other things, but those are the main, main ones. And go pick up Titan hoppers. Cause it's just a such, such a fun title to say. <laughs> it is and Derek what about you I am undirk on Twitter and Instagram uh, just uh, Dirk Ashton on Facebook there's a Paternus Media books a Paternus Books Media page on Facebook and www.paternusbooks.com awesome and, uh, Mike Fletcher promises to answer any questions that you send my way and uh, go get your, <laughs> go get yourself a Jed, and I will see you gentlemen later. <laughs> thank Sorry, you guys. all for, yeah. thank you all for coming yeah. on. Okay, it was good to see you. Take care. Traw. Traw. Ciao. <laughs> all right, and we have get out of here, Dirk. <laughs> we have Ryan Cahill and Brian Nasland and Quinn B. Olson here to talk about dick jokes and crotch biting and all that fun stuff. Like, this has been built up so much. It's I know. So much, I can't even remember. I can't even remember the context. 
<laughs> it's hard. I could see on Sebastian's face though, he had the same feeling that I had last time, which is like, I think I'm saying dick joke too much, but yeah. I, 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 I'm now in this in this cycle that I can't get out of. So I, I you're the dick joke guy now. Yeah. Oh, no, Brian. Brian. It's like yeah. Brian. Parentheses. Dick joke. Nasland. Yeah. It's not the branding that I intended, but you know, here we are. <laughs> but it's good to... right now. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> but it's really good to see you guys again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having us back. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure. I mean, all three were on uh, episode yes. 16, chatting about dragons and fun stuff, and now Ryan's waking up in the morning over in New Zealand so early to just grace us with was, his presence. I was Thank at a Chris buddy. Rock show last night, and I went, like, "Oh, I don't." <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I'm so I appreciate it, man. And you, you said you like missed a, a missed a football game or something too. No, no, no. Trust me, it's okay. Um, it, right. it, it, wasn't, it wasn't going well. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I appreciate let's, it. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, good morning, buddy. How you doing? Average. Yeah. Yeah. You've been writing a <laughs> fucking lot lately. You always post your um, word count on Instagram. Slightly, slightly ready to die. Yeah, but it, it's going. It, it's getting there. The problem is, like, I'm like, oh, once I get to 200,000 words, I'm done. I wasn't done. I'm going to get to yeah. 250,000 words. I'll be done. I won't be done. And it's like, you know what? This is going to be a big fucking book. <laughs> but thankfully, you're writing epic fantasy, so it's totally fine. Yeah, it is when you don't have like, a deadline. Yeah. So that's, that's the only problem. <laughs> you're a self pub author, so you created it yourself. <laughs> I, also, it, it's still there. <laughs> And Crystal, just bring it back. Most important question: Which of your books contains your favorite dick jokes? I'll leave. I'll give that to Brian. How you doing, buddy? Oh, which oh book God, contains either. your favorite dick joke? Which book of mine? Okay. <laughs> I think. See, this is the thing. It's all one dick joke throughout the three books. But mm, I'd say my okay. my favorite touchstone. That's a big dick. It's joke. that's part of the joke. A trilogy. Yeah. A trilogy, if you would. Yeah. yeah, it's a trilogy long dick joke. I, yeah, the third one has, you know, I finally get it right. The the right touchdown. Um, so yeah, book three. Each book, book three, itself there it is, is slightly more phallic shaped. You know, they do <laughs> I will say this, they get longer as they go. So, you know. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's well, you, you, you have to yeah. have you, you have to have the design on the spine so that when the series is done and you lie it up then across the spine it's just a long dip <laughs> this way and yeah, you don't you, realize you it, like, it yeah. until you get all of them together and then it's yeah. like oh, it completes it <laughs> that would be to, like, that would be pretty the, impressive uh, of orbit to have done that i would be very I think that's proud a, of that's a special edition i believe yeah, yeah. I, I would have had to like bribe the cover designer. It was like, look, I've got something with the spine that I want to do. You're going to find some money in your Venmo. Just, just, just go with me on this one. This is worth it. It's like yeah. Lauren Panapinto. Come on, here, let's do this. And then two lines here. And then... <laughs> so, Quenby, crotch biting. How you been? <laughs> I think a pro Quenby, did okay, you hear me? My sound went out for a second. No, I didn't. Oh, damn it. Oh, that no, would have been perfect. I said, I, Quen, I, I said, I, Quenby, crotch biting. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, didn't get very much sleep last night, so I'm kind of winging it here. It's all good. Oh, boo, boo. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From Ryan, it's like who kisses you? But uh, how you been, how have you been, Quenby? What's uh, what you been working on lately? Um, Jesus. Um, uh, trying to get the second Miss Percy book out and finish up the third Miss Percy book and um, write other things at the same time, which has been not a great plan. So um, other than that, not too much. And also keeping children alive. That's a, that's important. Yeah. It's it's writing keep alive. consumes everything, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's like, I'm just like playing with my son and I just like want to put him aside and write something. <laughs> You're like, sorry, buddy. But just like, just throw, just throw fruit snacks at them. You good? Yeah. No one has just, to pee. Just, just, just live your life for a while. You know, you, you don't yeah, need me anymore. Cute. You're cute, but you're yeah. still an obstacle. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you're not even two yet, but just like be independent, you know, yeah, figure it out. over there watching Deadpool. You're they fine. Actually, okay. You actually did that at, um, at the Chris Rock concert last night. Chris Rock was saying, I was like, I fucking hate kids. He's like, Human beings are the only things in the world you have to raise your kid for 18 years. Every other animal, yeah. it's like two days. Like a bird, it's like, hope you can fly. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, it's so true. Yeah, it's just like figured it's out. Commitment. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Quenby, uh, Crystal, 
Crystal's in the comments reminding you that your audiobook is coming on September 13th. So yes, my audio book is coming on September 13th. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Out. Good looking out. Yeah. Crystals, so um, I have to throw yeah. them in too. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, that was Brian, nice what you? Crystal. Oh, she's on it, man. She's on it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what you been up to lately, buddy? Oh, let's see. I think I can't remember if I last time I was doing a sci-fi thing, but I, you know, I got that in a good spot. So we're gonna see if anything comes comes from that one and then i've in the last month i've been in a protracted battle to try to come up with a fantasy thing that makes like enchanted items cool again not that they mm. aren't cool now but i wanted to try try my hand because i've never done anything like that yeah. and i've thrown out like you know five five approaches to it it's like this is this is not going to work but i think i might have one that's got some legs after trashing a whole bunch of you know 10,000 um, 10, word stars i find it very easy to write ten thousand words and then i'm like this is horseshit i'm yeah, this is gonna work I think that's kind of everyone. I think that's yeah, yeah. The first thing I was like, I'm a genius. This is going great. And then like, oh, yeah. like right this at ten thousand, it's, like, it's like yeah, it's like nope. I did, like did, what was I thinking? So I'm, I'm like, I've bre I've breached that that barrier with this one, and, mm -hmm. and now it's just a matter of seeing seeing where it's gonna go. Awesome, dude. Well, I mean, it's like basically writing a short story to be like, does this shit work? And then yeah. you just realize like, nah, nah. <laughs> it's not. You write 10 yeah. of them and then you've scrapped the double. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. What a waste, Ryan. What a waste. <laughs> uh, I, no, you, don't, I, you don't understand. I don't. I, I despise scrapping any sections or word count. I will make a. I will make a turd into a diamond. Oh, no, ser yes, seriously. I have. <laughs> I have never over half a million words in the series now, and I've never scrapped a chapter ever. Wow. Now, I've gone back and I've like, I've got the chapter, but the heart of what it was meant to be is still there. But I might yeah. have like changed the whole the essence of how they got to the end of that chapter or through it. But I just I won't. I fucking refuse. I oh, see, I I, <laughs> I punt stuff all the time. There's whole like you know, especially when I was doing the first trilogy. It's like, well, all the work of February 2019 is for naught. Like no one's ever gonna see see the light of that. <laughs> That's gone. It's distant memory. That hurts me like deep down. I really know. Cool. Yeah. 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 I'm on, the, I'm on the same page as you, Ryan. I'm just like, no, hold on to this for dear life and just like tweak it until it's something satisfying because I can't waste. I hear people do it. I hear people like, oh man, it was so sad. I had to cut 50k last month. I'm like, what? How? What? what? Where is this coming from? No, yeah. there are children that need food. <laughs> Where did that 50k no. go? Yeah, the thing I heard is like, oh, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, um, you'll hear authors say things like, oh, well, I turned in my book and I have to rewrite the entire book and it's only 150, 200,000 words. And I'm just like, I would pitch myself off a cliff. Like, I just don't think I'd be like, someone else can come along and finish that. I'm out. I'm done. You know? Yeah. But I do, I, I kind it. of, it's interesting to me because I think part of that it has to come more from like an imposter syndrome than anything else because like I'm like mm. 210, 220,000 words into this book now. And like, I do have that feeling where I'm going, oh shit, what if the book is an absolute turd? But like, mm. I'm, even though I have the imposter syndrome myself, I'm pretty confident that if I go back and have the time to edit it, I can make it something worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Like, but the idea of scrapping 60, 50, 60,000 just scares the living shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> At least I there's something that scares you as a, as a writer, though. That's yeah. important. I think my problem is that scares all... me. Yeah, you know, I'll work on a section where I'm like, all right, this guy's got a good narrative arc and I like where he ends up. But then when I'm done, I'm like, but what if he got shot in the face with a crossbow? Like the first <laughs> the first scene that he showed up in, like what what does that change? And then my, my problem is I can't help myself. I'm like, all right, we're doing it where he gets shot in the face with a crossbow. So new character, new thing. And then, Man. you know, sometimes it feels it feels better that way. So I guess it's uh, I Brian just putting that. himself into holes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I, I don't recommend it. You two sound like you have better uh, approaches. Fuck, the crossbow's got to stay. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever had, I've definitely, I've definitely had the thing, oh, wow, his death or her death or that death would be much more poignant if I had it now at this point. I don't think I've mm. ever gone, you know what, if it was with a crossbow at this time, that would be really fucking cool. Mm. I think I've thought it, but I don't think I've done it. <laughs> Yeah. Take a take well, a page again, from Brian and do it, Ryan. I don't. Do I don't. It. I can't in good conscience I recommend am, that. You know, entertain the thought, I, vacation in it for a minute, and then carry on with your life, and yeah. it's going to be way better. I'm going to have a tokerized. <laughs> I'm going to have a tokerized Brian Naslund character hit in the face with a crossbow. Good. Okay. Mm. I appreciate that. Yeah. I like it. And yeah. on that note, I gotta kick you beautiful people off here. Ryan's going to go yeah. eat breakfast or something. <laughs>
<laughs> Quinby's gonna go rest up. But thank you all so much for for hanging out with me again. It was really good to see you. I missed you guys. And uh, yeah, everyone, go check out sixteen episode sixteen to hear them talk about dragons. And um, Quinby, let us know what's coming up and where people can find you on social media. Uh, coming up is the audiobook for Miss Percy, which is September 13th. Miss Percy 2 is out on October 25th. And you can find me on uh, Twitter at Q Eisenacher and Facebook, Quimby Olsen Author. And uh, my website is uh, Quimby Olsen WordPress because I'm old school and boring. And that's all. <laughs> buy, buy a domain, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think everybody hurt a little bit there. Oh, WordPress cringe. You can do it. <laughs> and uh, Ryan, what about you? What's coming up? And um, where can people find you on social media? Yeah, so at the minute, I have the third book. Uh, it was probably technically the fifth book, but it's the third main book in the series. Mm -hmm. Coming up, I'm hoping for December. It might push out a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And because it is a big fucking book and it's taken a while to write. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, it keeps growing, but it's, it's, I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> Um, and I recently discovered, maybe like a few months ago, that if you just literally Google my name, that I, I'm like the, the search result that comes up with a website and all this sort of stuff. So that's that's just Google my name. And in uh, terms of people who can't be Googled immediately because there's someone else with the same name, Brian Naslin, where can people find yeah. you on social media? I, think <laughs> I, I do, remember that, I, I, I remember I, that I too. Rank, <laughs> yeah, I rank the hockey player now, I think. Um, but... Um, um, I'll do research. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah. It might depend on you know where you are and everything. But, um, yeah, my website <laughs> BrianNelson.com is good. I'm on Twitter. Um, and yeah, that's that's me. We got see. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Popping right up. Yeah. Right up. Not just the oh. first result. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You kicked his ass. It's because I bought nice. my own domain. You know. I yeah. Know you Fuck knocked, hockey. Yeah. You just knocked them off. Brian's the killing it on that yeah. SEO, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right well you beautiful oh, yeah. people thank you so much for for hanging out with me thank you ryan for getting up early and uh i will Ooh. see you all soon again would love to have you back on the show so take thanks. it easy okay yeah, all right thanks for having us on thank bye you. bye <laughs> all right and next up we have tom joining us from england we also have sean Connolly. we got tori and and justin and lord tbr himself He's What's not even there. Folks? He's going to be there somewhere. Kind of. <laughs> Turn that camera on, us. man. He's How just transcended to a new plane of existence. Now he's just a voice. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> he's, like a, he's, like digital, he's like a digital soul at this point. Yes. Yeah. I just live, I just live behind my logo now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing? Tom, how was Tilly's birthday? It was amazing. We took her to Bird World and she was so excited by all the birds that she didn't go to sleep till 10 p.m. I'm knackered really? now. I'm just, I'm existing on caffeine. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm, I'm upright at the moment. I'm saying. <laughs> Dude, well, thanks for being here. You know, I know how it feels. It's like sometimes you're just like, I want to sleep too. Shut your eyes. You know? <laughs> what what is sleep. this strange thing, sleep, of which you speak? <laughs> And uh, Sean, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Um, I've got some company with girl? me right now. She uh, would not stay with her siblings, was throwing a fit, so she's going to hang out with us today. Okay, that's all good. She's beautiful, so she can hang out with us. And uh, Tom, no, say hi. All right. all right. Tom, Ryan Cahill loves your beard. I love Ryan Cahill and his lack of beard. <laughs> yeah, and Ryan, where's your beard, man? Is there's a Captain Harnet in one of his books, and um, I, I just messaged him saying, please don't kill them off. Please yeah. don't kill Captain Harnet. Really, we just really, talked really about really killing off characters, so Ryan, I know. go for it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, how is our dear Lord TBR? How have you been? Yeah, doing good. Just, uh, just staying busy, trying to keep a two-year-old alive and happy, uh, which is more difficult than it sounds sometimes. That's the goal, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, just uh, just still trying to read as much as I can in between conference calls and all other kinds of stuff. So still alive. That's the main thing. Yeah. For anyone out there who's worried about David, he's still he's still kicking. He's just got a, a fancy new job and he left us all behind. 
Yeah, yeah, all, all in the <laughs> dust. Even though I, I feel like I, I tweet more than I did the past like six months, but <laughs> I know, man. You've been tweeting. You've been like, it's like, oh, I got a review or something. And it's like, where, where this come from, Mister? I gotta step away. I know, I know. I, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll go away yeah. soon. <laughs> uh, Tom Ryan said she's safe. I got you, so don't worry about Captain Harnett. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, you got it. It's all good. And. um Tori is going to be doing a live reading for us from her book, Zodiac Rising. That's still the title, right? Yes. All right. Well, I will, so I will let you go. I feel like I'm going to puke. Don't go. That's all good. Connor did it. I did it. You got this. You got this, girl. Oh, now? Yeah, if you want to. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. All right. Maybe Am start. No, the fucking, of course. It's like, how many times <laughs> do we swear on this podcast? <laughs> um, if you want to give people a little bit of a synopsis of, of Zodiac Rising, and then whenever you're ready, you can you can get into it. Yeah, that would probably be uh, uh, pretty helpful. Um, okay. So basically, it's about this girl um, who is... Uh, a zodiac that's what you know they're they're called they're um essentially like magic special forces <laughs> if that makes sense um they're supposed to be like this elite um band of warriors who can all use elemental magic and it's based on like the zodiac signs um and her name, her name is Capricorn. She is currently 16, but I'm still playing around with like age and stuff. And like, if I want to age her up or whatever. And um, so right now they're all 16, but that is subject to change. Um, so basically her mentor gets murdered and her best friend slash love interest gets accused of the crime. And she's, she basically is sent on like a bounty mission um, and there's a religious cult and there's, um, a coup d'etat and there's just a whole mess of things that are going on in this book <laughs> that I still really need to write a synopsis for. So that's what that, these are yeah. all about. It's like, how <laughs> well can you condense your novel? But I'm really <laughs> excited about it. And whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try not to peep. <laughs> flash of lightning woke her. The thunder that followed rattled the window, shaking it so hard that it nearly fell out of the frame. She bolted upright, a sheen of cold sweat on her brow. She wiped it away with her hand and noticed she was shaking. It was warm beneath her blanket, but the rest of the room was icy. Her breath came out in heavy pants, and she could make out a faint puff of heat. Surrounded by the darkness, there was a feeling of dread that she could not shake. Something was wrong. She flung off her covers and darted to her wardrobe, pulling out a robe. She barely had it on before she was out the door. The hall was dark. The sconces had been put out. Sagittarius nearly always kept them lit. A shiver ran through her as she crept through the house. She could hear Aries snores from his room, but the others were silent. She tiptoed down, she tiptoed down to Sagittarius's room at the end of the hall, just past the staircase. Under normal circumstances, she would knock, but the ominous feeling she had would not leave her. When she pushed on the door, it opened with a soft creak. She crept inside, expecting to see him somewhere in the room. Instead, she was met with more silence. She looked out the window. In the distance, the sky was turning from black to gray. It was nearly dawn. She turned and fumbled her way to the stairs in the darkness. The old floorboards groaned beneath her weight, and she winced at the booming noise. If she had been an air zodiac, she could have muffled the sound. Still, she pressed on. When she was on the ground floor, she hesitated. She, she could turn back, crawl back into her bed, and wait for the sun to rise. No one would fault her for it. Coward, her mind insisted. She swallowed the lump in her throat as she passed the kitchen, the thought of a weapon crossing her mind. If she was going to face this, she would face it on. She was a soldier for divine sakes. Barely, she thought bitterly. Entering the room, she pulled a medium-sized knife from the wooden block by the stove, then crept back through the still open door. It was large enough to do damage, but small enough to wield effectively. Her breaths were ragged and her heart 
desperate hammered against her ribs. There was tension in the air she could almost taste. She huffed once and inhaled. Pull yourself together, Capricorn. She straightened her full height. Why was she so afraid? Just because the sconces were out didn't mean that something was wrong. But she knew in her gut that was a lie. She checked the rooms one after the other, keeping her knife at eye level. It was no sword, but it would do. When she rounded the last corner, a light coming from beneath the door of the training room caught her eye. She crept forward, holding her breath and letting the carpet muffle her steps. There was a slight quiver in her hands that she chalked up to the cold, the frigid, penetrating cold that permeated the house. It was as if all the life and warmth in the house had seeped through the floorboards and out into the forehead. There was no happiness here, no light. Her home loomed over her like a dungeon, and for a moment she didn't recognize the familiar halls. She was at the door now, so why did she hesitate? What held her back? She reached out a hand. She knew that she should open it and face whatever was on the other side. She could almost hear the others chastising her for her cowardice. She pictured the first Capricorn, brandishing an earthen club, pounding through waves after wave of enemies, all of them begging for blood like hounds. If that Capricorn could be brave, so could the one standing in her own, own home like a terrified child. She breathed. Ever so carefully, she turned the knob and it let out a shrill, shrill squeak. The noise nearly made her jump out of her skin. There was no more hiding. She brandished her knife and shoved open the door. Sagittarius lay on the floor. Blood stained his white robe open the mats below. His head was turned toward her, mouth gaping in a wordless O. His body was bent nearly in half, the lower part of him twisted, legs splayed out at awkward angles. Yet her gaze lingered on his eyes. Death had not yet clouded them, and their piercing blue locked her in place. She thought back to all the times his stare alone had righted a wrong behavior, corrected some error in her combat movements. And now it was lifeless, staring past her into nothingness. The divines had claimed him. The training room itself was a mess. Straw littered the floor and shards of glass jutted out from the wall. Her knife clattered to the floor. The destruction was absolute. But the worst part, the part that nearly brought her to her knees, was the person standing over Sagittarius' body, his back to her. Her mind reeled, trying to understand what she saw, not him. Him, she prayed to the divines. Anyone but him. him. Theo, she said. Theo. Amazing, Tori. I love, I love a story that starts out like a good murder mystery, so you've already got me on board. Thanks. Mm. It's super raw, and um, I still have a lot of work to do, but that's what I have. Yeah. But everything's a work in progress. And if there's anything that I've learned from, you know, meeting everyone at FanFi Addict, it's just the unbelievable talent that everybody has, you know, the passion that everybody has for science fiction and fantasy and writing and everything like that. And, you know, David, I want to thank you personally for, you know, starting FanFi Addict and giving us the platform to do our writing, but also giving me the encouragement to, you know, start this podcast and all of you for being on the podcast and supporting me along the way. You know, Tom's been on multiple times, Tori and, and Justin as well. Sean was on for episode 18, talking about our favorite fantasy series. David's been on a bunch of times as well. So I really appreciate everything you all have done for me. I can't believe that one year has passed since I, since I started doing that, since I started doing this Crazy. podcast. But time flies, man. Like this podcast is half the age of my son, so I can't really... <laughs> believe that and um i'm just very very thankful to all of you to everyone that fan addict to everyone who's been on the show to all the authors that i've spoken to and, and and had the chance to interview all the friends i've made and to everyone out there who's watching right now who has listened in the past who will listen in the future you are all amazing and uh, i love you very much so thank you so much Absolutely, man. I'm proud of you. You've done you've done a the killer job on the podcast. Thanks, I mean, even but sure. even before that with reviews and I mean you're just uh 
you're not a one hit wonder. So keep, keep, <laughs> I keep, hope doing, not. <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And uh, for anyone who is looking forward to another edition of TBRCon 2023, David had to step back, but a bunch of us has come together to make sure that it's going to happen because we want to carry that on. Um, so, you know, look forward to that in January and uh, look forward to more uh, SFF Addicts episodes. We're going to be doing some amazing stuff in the next uh, few months. We've got some awesome author panels, some really awesome interviews coming up. So, yeah, stay tuned. Everyone just uh, stay safe and, and be well. And I'm sending love out to everyone who has helped me along the way, who's watching, listening to all of you guys and everyone else at FanFly Addict. Thank you.